It's one thing falling in love with a house, and quite another navigating the world of negotiating, mortgage lenders, and finding the budget that works best for you. Guidance from an agent who's a Realtor can make all the difference, because that's who we are. Realtors are members of the National Association of Realtors. It's warming up, folks, and about time to turn on your AC unit and cross your fingers. Or you can give up that moment of truth and switch to an American Standard heat pump system like I did. My place is on Comfort Autopilot thanks to American Standard. Energy efficient and reliable, my heat pump keeps things cool like the Arctic in the summer. And with energy incentives, I was able to save. Ready for the future of comfort? Learn more at AmericanStandardAir.com slash electrification. It's Gun Storage Check Week and National Suicide Prevention Month. Securely storing your firearms can help prevent suicide. Use lockboxes, safes, and locks to deter unwanted access. Learn more at GunStorageCheck.org and enter to win a gun safe. That's GunStorageCheck.org. If you or someone you know is struggling, call 988, the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. Brought to you by NSSF, the Firearm Industry Trade Association. These deals are working hard to save you money. From August 28th through September 3rd, save 15% off Balin stock tanks, $200 off black diamond log splitters, and find big discounts on shoes for the family. Coastal Farm and Ranch, we just what the country needs. Make the most of your Labor Day weekend with Coastal. What's up? It's your boy, the Ted Smith from the Men's Room. And did you know I have a podcast? Well, I do. The Podcast. New episodes uploaded every Wednesday on the Odyssey app. Unfortunately, what you're about to hear is real. The members of this radio program are simply not that bright. Or what some people would call educated. They are merely stupid. They're not trying to offend anyone on purpose. And all have played doctors on TV. You have been warned and are cordially invited to join the party. This is the men's room. Forget it, man, and get with the countdown. Get, 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 get with the countdown. Shake this square world and blast off for Kicksville. Kicks. <laughs> The trippers, the grasshoppers, the hip ones, all gathered in secrecy and flying high as a kite. This is the men's room with Miles and Thrill. You know what they say, shake your radio more than three times and you're playing with it. You're listening to the men's room. And away we go. Welcome to season 19, episode number 4,158. Along with Steve the Thrill Hill, the Ted Smith, and my cock. Montgomery! And you, Hard to Men's Room. On tap today, the return of Who Sucks Less. Yes. We will play profile this. Plus headlines, a midterm shout of the day, fun with listener emails, and everyone's favorite. TV time with Ted. Click. Clack. Drink. Get you drunk. All right, here we go. A seagull steals a man's wallet in Nantucket before running so far away. Meanwhile, wow. when a naked man successfully carjacks you, it is definitely not your day. <laughs> Oregon woman learns that uh, siphoning gas and smoking don't mix. A rider learns one of the canine dog's new tricks. And a Kansas toddler is rescued after falling down a 10-foot drain pipe. That is all coming on today's very special episode of The Men's Room. And now, here's the question. Hola, bitches. Good day to you and yours. All right, July 4th has come and gone. And if you're a dog owner, I hope you don't have one of those dogs that freaks out when the fireworks go off. But if you do have a dog that gets weirded out by fireworks or other loud noises, you're not alone. According to a British uh, study, 47% of dogs get anxious because of fireworks. That's not very surprising. But you might be surprised by some of the other ordinary things that might be freaking your pet out. For example, 7% of pets get anxious when you open the fridge. When you open the fridge. But 19% of pets, they get nervous when you fart. Who to thunk it? So there you go. One out of five of your pets every time you fart one out of there, your pet gets real nervous. Who knew? 
Now, we have a list of 10 actions that make pets anxious that we'll share with you coming up. But before we play tiny violins for our furry little friends, let's not forget the things they do that make us crazy. Now, a few weeks ago, we brought you the story of a dog in Colorado that started a house fire when it accidentally turned on the stove late night. And, of course, there were boxes on top of the stove, which burst into flames. Well, not to be outdone, a dog in Oklahoma, it started a house fire after chewing on a cell phone battery pack. Or how about the cat from Utah that climbed in a box and ended up being shipped all the way to California? Now, sure, the cat was found, but the owner still had to lose money buying plane tickets to go get its dumbass. Or even worse, a woman discovered that her boyfriend had been cheating on her when his parents kept screaming, I love you, Jess. Well, her name is not Jess. Now, we're guessing that boyfriend isn't real happy about having that parrot anymore. And that's at the heart of what today's question is. Look, we know you love your pets, but every so often we have what we'll just call buyer's remorse. So that's what today's question is. Even though you love them, when did you second guess owning your pet? To be a part of the big show, call 206-803-ROCK. Like The Men's Room on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Men's Room Live, and send those emails to the men's room at KISW.com. It's one thing falling in love with a house, and quite another navigating the world of negotiating, mortgage lenders, and finding the budget that works best for you. Guidance from an agent who's a Realtor can make all the difference, because that's who we are. Realtors are members of the National Association of Realtors. This is NSSF, the Firearm Industry Trade Association. It's Gun Storage Check Week and National Suicide Prevention Month. Securely storing firearms can help prevent suicide. Use lockboxes, safes, and locks to deter unwanted access. Learn more at GunStorageCheck.org and enter to win a gun safe. That's GunStorageCheck.org. If you or someone you know is struggling, call 988, the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. With an American Standard heat pump system, the future of heating and cooling your home is already here. Bringing constant comfort to your home, American Standard heat pumps are energy efficient, reliable, and ready for tomorrow, today. Plus, making the upgrade from your traditional furnace or AC unit is easier than ever before with home energy offers, rebates, and tax credits. Learn more at AmericanStandardAir.com slash electrification. American Standard. Built to a higher standard. Intercom's AI First customer service platform is such an upgrade that everything else feels a little outdated. To whom it may concern, stop. I find myself displeased with your product and wish to return it to you. Stop. Dear customer, stop. Our deepest condolences, stop. We're happy to assist in this matter. Stop. The future of customer service is here. Intercom is built on AI from the ground up to deliver fast, smart customer support. Intercom, AI first customer service. The debauchery rolls on. You're listening to The Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. 99.9 KISW. Oh, but Charles, away we go. Welcome to season 19, episode number 4,158. What a large and in charge program we have for you today. Guaranteed future repeat. Exciting return of Who Sucks Less. I don't know how you do it, Steve. You find people in the news doing weird crap. Yeah. And you bring us the three stories every week. We have to take those stories, pit them up against each other to determine out of the three, which one actually sucks the least. Is it a heavy day or a lighthearted day on Who Sucks Less? I mean, I wouldn't say lighthearted as all three stories do deal with assault, but the assaults are so stupid okay. that somehow it's lighthearted. All right. You know, they make assault funny. Yeah, but it doesn't take much to assault someone, right? Like if I throw a cotton ball at Ted, he could sue me for assault, right? If it makes contact, yes. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So it, it depends on the odds. And if Ted's a bitch. But I always weigh the odds. Miles throws it, I'm suing. I know I know for a fact that, <laughs> that, jail, that, dude. that is assault. But sometimes you just go, come on. You know, you threw a stuffed animal at a guy. So, right. So what? You know. Wait, isn't technically battery the point that you make contact? Because I thought assault would be like, hey, Ted, you're a big, dumb, poopy head. Mm-hmm. I believe that might be assault. Well, then I, this, then I throw the verbal... cotton ball... And yeah. that's battery. I believe that's how it is. Hence right. assault and yeah. battery. So if I just walk up to someone and beat their ass, but mm-hmm. I don't say anything to them, and as we're in charge with assault and battery, but uh, I think just battery. Well, what you do is this. You throw them a pillow, right? But you've got your own. And then you just start going at them. Because no one's going to. No, no one's going if they to. hit you back, then you're just having yeah. a pillow fight. But that's if what I'm they, saying. If they put their no pillow one, down, 
and I keep hitting you with the pillow. No, it's a pillow it's fight. Assault. No, it's assault. No, this is assault. No, I don't so, believe it. So here's what they say. They, 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 are, they are two different crimes, but they're often charged with both at the same time. So assault is intentionally or recklessly causing someone to fear imminent harm. This fear must be something a reasonable person would foresee. I'm threatening. going to beat your ass. The victim doesn't need to be hurt or even touched for the incident to count as assault. For right. example, telling somebody that you will slap their face is assault. Ooh. So tell you, like, right. like the bagel guy, shut your mouth guy. Like, they would charge him with assault, but I wouldn't press charges because I would say, look, you said I have to be reasonably scared. This five foot nothing louder. I'm not worried about him. No, I, I, I think so, it has to be an actual levied threat. So just telling somebody to shut up, I don't think that's not assault. assault. But, or I will kick you. Or ass. I will make you shut up. Okay. That, that uh-huh. I think transfers okay. into assault. Okay. assault. Okay. Battery is intentionally or recklessly applying unlawful force to another person, which involves some kind of physical contact. For example, hitting somebody with a flashlight is battery. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> with three double Ds in there. Right. <laughs> they All right. take flashlight. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, uh, who sucks last coming up? We'll also have some updated locations uh, for the men's room IPA from Black Raven Brewing on the way. If you're into the ball game, we'll give you those uh, sections where you can find the beer uh, again tonight. Hopefully, we can uh, scrounge up a win against the Detroit Tigers, which uh, seemed to be a, a little bit more elusive than thought last night. Well, what's going on there, Mike? What, what is confused. a double D battery? Is that a thing? Oh, a D battery. <laughs> Did you say double D battery? I didn't say double is, D, that's yeah. about a Freudian. That's, that's, a, yeah. that's a big fat. Yeah. That's a big fat battery. Yeah. Yeah. As I said, there's no double, double D batteries. D, double D. <laughs> give me the double D. That's assault with battery. Yeah. So we'll give you some uh, updates double on the men's room IPA <laughs> coming up for sure. <laughs> Uh, and your chance to win uh, your share of $100,000 if you've got the Odyssey app. I'll be sure to sign in right now. Listen for one hour for your chance to win your share of $100,000 in cash. We just uh, heard, was that Jenny? Is that what she uh, said? We, we got a winner, man, on our show. Yeah, we, uh, it was from ours. So that's why yes. we're excited about this. Yeah, somebody got a, and you know what? I think it's her, her name, Jenny. I believe it's Jenny. Uh, Jenny, let us know when you're going to take us out for beers. This is fantastic. That's all we ask. Yeah. Give you me a thousand bucks. bucks. You got a thousand bucks. Maybe it'll be a $150 bar tab. Maybe. That's all I'm saying, right? We're not going to run it up any more than that. And here's the Four good news. Us. We can do 150 in like 30 minutes. It won't take long. I'll tell you what. I'll do the tip. Uh, you just take care of the actual charge on the card, right? I so think you that's $1,000. <laughs> 150 Yeah. The... You don't think we can hit 150 No, I know we can. You order <laughs> shots. Like, like, that's how the bill goes up. I know that. That's why I said like, I, Mike and I can, like, can we have two beers? Right. Yeah. Well, you can do that. But, yeah. like, Jenny's buying. So, so you might as well get the top right. shelf stuff, so I'm talking, man. This is free money to her. She doesn't care. I'll tell you what. If she gives us a $150 limit, I'm going to order first and tell them, give me a shot that costs $150. We told you if you just <laughs> yeah. downloaded the Odyssey app that you had a good chance of winning. And see, it actually turned out that yes, that indeed. happened. And that's only uh, one one-hundredth of the money. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot more chances for you to win. She uh, name-checked us, too. Did she really? She did. I also got the Odyssey. Let me hear this. Oh, yeah. I love the Odyssey app. I literally listen to the men's room in the in a, a Seattle market every single day. And it's nice because I can listen if I'm in eastern Washington or traveling to other states. I always have the Odyssey app available. So listen oh. to my hometown radio station. All right, Jenny. Don't, I don't have to say don't anything. Don't kiss their ass. I don't have to say anything. Just yeah. listen to Jenny do it, right? <laughs> yeah, we should just say it. I said, just have Jenny do it. Look, man. Oh, yeah. I love the Odyssey app. I literally listen to the men's room in the in a, a Seattle market every single day. Yeah. See, I can't say I love the Odyssey app because I don't listen to it. Because we're on the air. So, like, it's not genuine for me. Yeah, of course. We come in and we listen to the radio station in the office. You're you know just I mean? trying to get out on of work, speakers. No, I'm not. I'm just being honest. <laughs> you know, now, now, if I am out on the golf course, I will put on the men's room radio station. Sure. Which is on the Odyssey app and listen to tunes on that. But I'm not listening to us again. Not on, not on the weekend. Are you losing your mind? Now, if I want to put on the Yacht Rock channel or something like that, I'll do it. But, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. I don't listen to our show. No. I mean, we listen to each other for four hours a day. What do you think I am? Like a, a narcissist? <laughs> and to that degree, where I'm like, oh, I want to hear that funny joke that Steve told. No. Like, <laughs> no, I don't. I already heard it. You know what I mean? It's like... But she is legitimately loving the Odyssey app, you see. Oh, yeah, I love the Odyssey see? app. I literally see? listen to the men's room oh. in, the, in a, a Seattle market every single day. I couldn't even fake that. Seattle market. I couldn't even Seattle fake market. that. Well, they asked her where you're calling from, you know, because it's a nationwide I mean, contest. Most people would just say they Seattle. Say, they say in the disclaimer, but they say, hey, where, where are you? Where are you? Where, yeah. where do you live? Where do you live? Where do you listen? And so that's why she said she's in the Seattle market. Seattle market. Just Seattle. 
Yeah. Yeah. They, just say so. Well, it's a market. There's, if you take yeah, a look at it, it's Tacoma, it's Everett, it's uh, Bellevue, it's, it's, it's the mm. entire area. You know what I mean? Seattle. Yeah, you're right. We get down to Not Olympia. Not just Seattle, it's no. the Seattle market. We, we get okay. out to the San Juans. I mean, we have listeners in British Columbia and, and everywhere else. But, uh, yeah, we got a winner on that. So, again, you just need to sign in when you download the app. It's free. If you listen for one hour, that will uh, uh, put you into the drawing to win that uh, $1,000 and your share of 100000 She might not be listening to us anymore, though. <laughs> I think she may have just said, I'm listening to the show for one hour. These freaking idiots for one hour. Mm-hmm. I won my, I'm out. Yeah, uh, and she makes a good point. If you are on the road, you do travel. Uh, the one thing about the Odyssey app is once we kind of fade out wherever we do, I think, if you're headed north, sometimes you get up uh, a little bit closer to, uh, to Bellingham, so to speak. We kind of fade out there and right south. Like Great Wolf Lodge, if you're headed south on I-5, is kind of where we start to fizzle out. Golden uh, Gardens because of the mountain. I know. Uh, yeah, I know. Golden Gate, you're right freaking there. But Absolutely. You can't pick it up. Yeah, there, there's some there's some areas in town, but if you have the Odyssey app, you have a chance to win that money. All right, today we're going to talk about pets, and as much as you love your pet, there are oftentimes, even like with children, you go, "Why in the hell did I get myself into this?" Every day, every day, probably three times a day, whether it's the kids or the pet, specifically the, the cat. You know, Rainbow Janet. I'm sorry, Dubs for Double Rainbow. She's a sweet cat. She, as far as cats go, man, she's cool. She does not freak out. She's very calm. Absolutely loves my daughter. She hangs out with it. She's good. My dog, I do love her, <clears throat> uh, but she is a lunatic. I mean, there's no other right. way to explain yeah. it. And we were we were at the local watering hole, as it were, uh, this past Sunday. And on this day, pretty much everyone that owned a dog that likes to go to the bar brought their dog into the bar. I mean, it was it was insane. It had to be probably seven dogs at one point. This is early in the afternoon. And one of the uh, other patrons there said, uh, why don't you guys bring uh, your guy's dog here? And me and my wife, like, burst out laughing. And we understand, if you don't know our dog, you don't know. But we just started laughing. We're like, look, that will never happen. What would happen? In 10 million years. Uh, she would become instant alpha. And she would she would be very demanding that these other dogs follow her lead. It's the shepherd in her. And if you have, like, an Australian herd dog of any kind, you know this to be true. But if you put her around other dogs or a large group of kids... Like, so the kids will play out in the driveway or whatever. Let the dog outside. They are all kind of rounded up into one area. Like, everything must be organized. Everything must be... Okay, all right. But if we brought her into that bar, the way I explained it to this woman, I said, look, picture we're throwing a party, and it's a people party, uh, but now making dogs. So all these dogs are coexisting. They're fine. Their tails are wagging. They don't know each other, but they're cool. My dog, no one invited this dog to the party, but as soon as she steps in your house... She fires a gun into your ceiling. Yes, yes. No, yeah. she's not there to rob you. <laughs> she's not there to bring harm to anyone. In fact, she wants to have her version of a good time, but everyone else feels uncomfortable because you say, look, no one knows her, and it's cool that she can do a cake stand. Why did she fire a mm-hmm. bullet into the ceiling as soon as she wanted? I'm like, that's my dog. Right. Yeah, look, man, I've taken care of, um, God, my brother's kids when they were little. They were like, you know, babies or one or two so that uh, he and his wife could go out on a date night when I came in to see him and things like that. It's kind of like a puppy. Uh, I would prefer to babysit like an eight or ten year old niece or nephew because yes. then we can kind of watch a movie or hang out. Absolutely, or man. A little bit more together. But uh, as far as the idea of starting out with a with an animal that is beginning life, you basically have a toddler on your hands. And this it, was it my is first so experience. So difficult. With that. I think you don't yeah. realize what raising you're raising a puppy. Yeah, yeah. I didn't yeah. know because no. every other dog I'd gotten, and, and this dog was a rescue as well. But every other dog I'd gotten was at least two years old, right? And mm-hmm. and you know they were fine. All my other dogs have been very very calm. This is just not her nature. And she's five or six years old now. I honestly don't remember. Don't care. She's definitely grown out of her puppy stage, but it's like an adult that still has the mind of a nine-year-old. Right. right? You go like, oh, no, they're full grown, man, but there's just a certain place mentally uh, where she does not get past. But when she was a puppy, I mean, every day I'm like, why did I do this? And my wife, you know, we would go to bed, and my wife would just kind of roll over in the dark and be like, just remember, this is your fault. Right. I'm like, I, I know. I know. I said we should get the dog. I sent you a picture of the dog. Where we went wrong was... We were having this conversation over text, and then my kids kind of looked over her shoulder, saw the dog, and said, is that the dog we're getting? Well, we had not agreed to get a dog yet, but at that point, my wife goes like, look, both kids are freaking out now because they think we're getting a dog. I said, look, let's just get the freaking dog. And they've been very happy to have it, but for the first two years, an absolute nightmare. No. I don't know the way to put it. Well, and puppies, too, like, they nip. But, you, like, I forgot, like, their teeth are just so the sharp. The razor yeah. sharp, yeah. man. Dude, yeah. I, was, I was walking behind a woman uh, last night, and she was walking her dog. And this little dog was up in front, 
about six feet, fired up, happy to take a walk, head up, bopping around, little dog, so obviously cute, funny. You yeah. know, but this Everything dog, they do is This funny. dog is basically like, come on, baby, let's go. I mean, yeah. And I, my last three dogs were beagles. Now, beagles do not lead in any way, shape, or form. They are the ones behind you. You have to pull them. You have to get them away from stuff. You have to make sure that they don't eat everything on the walk. They are absolutely a freaking menace to deal with when it comes to just basic things. Now, those dogs, for the most part, two of them, step foot in the Atlantic Ocean and also the Pacific Ocean, All right. which is quite the journey. They traveled in a car across the United States of America. Yeah, but they don't know that. They that's don't, the they, problem. They, like, they, that's cool, look, man. Look, 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 <laughs> look, look, right. you could have, they just did it. Look, yeah. You could have, you could be walking on the most beautiful beach in the world, and orcas are breaching, and I don't know, like a giant milk bone comes out of the middle of the ocean, <laughs> and, a, and a UFO lands, and, and an alien comes out and starts petting their head they don't care right they have not looked up their entire life they they spent their entire lives looking straight down at the ground they never caught any of it they right. didn't even know what planet they were on they didn't even know where they were at any given point the only thing they cared about was finding food right and That's finding it. something to eat and not wanting to go out into the rain and being pains in the asses all the time. You would come home and go, what drawer did they open? Oh, my God, they ate an entire bag of hot dog buns. It, it just, it, it, it was. That's the stuff for, I, I got to go. I had childproof uh, latches on my on the drawers in my kitchen because they knew how to open up the drawers, get in there, pull anything out of a snack drawer. They could get up on the counter. They would knock a bunch of bananas off of the counter and eat the bananas <laughs> peel and all they'll eat they'll eat till they die yeah yeah and i mean it was just this constant game of what what did they get into what what smelled good in this trash can mm -hmm. cuz it's in the bathroom it's not in the That's, kitchen. Uh, you know, they say, hey, man, dogs, you know, their they're ancestors are wolves. They're deep down. They have a taste for blood. Yes, but in my experience, it's menstrual blood specifically. So we actually, mm. right? So whether it's my wife or my daughter, like, I will know when they're cycling because I'll come home and there's tampons on the floor. Mm. And they're used tampons, yeah. which makes it worse. And I'm like, God damn it. So the, the trash cans that are in the bathroom... One of them, she just can't open. It's one of those foot release things, and it's too tall. It's not that she couldn't yeah. just knock it over, but the kid's trash can is now, and it sucks. It's just annoying, but it's under the sink, behind the closed door, because no matter mm -hmm. the threats level, anything else you try to do, there were tampons on the floor. And I got home Monday, all right? So my wife was out. I get home. There's no one else home. She texts me, like, I'll be home in 20 minutes. Like, all right. Now, when I get home, my dog is always at the door to greet me. Gets this weird side eye, her ass is mm -hmm. shaking at yep. the speed of light. And as soon as I open the door, she is in my face all around me. Well, she's not there. So already I'm like, okay. It's yeah. one of these. What did the dog do? I open the door. She still does not Sometimes she'll be asleep, so she doesn't really hear you walking up. But you open the door, she shows up. Still no sign of the dog. I walk in, I look in her crate. She's in there. Now she's awake, and she's looking at me. I'm like, mm. come here. And it's mm -hmm. this... Normally, again, I have to say nothing, and she springs on me. So it's this real slow get up, and just that guilt face. So the head is hanging low, and the dogs are basically looking straight up. They're looking straight up, and they're looking at you because their head is so far down. Yeah, and they have that weird walk, and she's doing everything she can to not make contact. So I'm looking at her, and I'm like, and her tail's not wagging. So I'm like, ah, what did you do? Now I have to go around the house to find what it is that you did. And as soon as I stand up, she darts back into the crate. She's all curled up and still staring at me, though. I look under the coffee table, nothing. I look behind the cushions on the sofa, nothing. Feel the cushions, nothing. I look all around the living mm -hmm. room. I go down the hall. I go into both kids' bedrooms. I go into the bathroom. I go into our bedroom, our bathroom. Go down the stairs. I look around the basement. I look in the kitchen, the dining room, the home office, laundry room. There's nothing, all right? There's absolutely nothing. But she's still being real coy. So I'm staring at her for like five minutes and I'm thinking, I know you have done something and I do not know where it is, whatever it is that you've done. So then I look around, did she pee somewhere? Did she puke somewhere? Long story short, I find no evidence of anything. So I even say to the dog, look, I know you did something, but I can't find what you did. So in that sense, you're okay. And once I said that, now she springs yeah. out of the crate. Nice. All right. So the thing is, she got away with something. I don't know what it is. Then when my wife gets home, I said, look, before you left to grab the kids, man, did she do something to get in trouble? Because sometimes it's residual, you know? And she's like, no. What did she do? I said, but I, I don't know what she did. She did something. But she had the same response when my wife gets home with the kids. And normally, dog or dart for the wife. 
Same thing, just real slow, kind of, so like, is she sick? There's nothing wrong with her. I'm like, she just got away with something, mm-hmm. and we don't know what it is. I told you, you still is. don't know what it was. I don't, because then my wife did a check, because like anything, I can open the fridge and not find the ketchup, and she's like, do you mean the ketchup directly in front of you, right? So she does the look around, because like, she's got detective things. She couldn't find anything, and once the dog realized we can't figure out what it is you did, the dog was fine the rest of the night, but the whole night I'm looking at her like, what I, in I, the I, F did The dog you? ate something. Yeah, no, I'm absolutely. Get, but ate all, all of, of it. it. But there was uh, no evidence, because usually when the dogs eat something they're not supposed to, you do find out within 24 hours, right, what it was. Nothing. Miles, a dog, uh, the wife brought home, she was at a Christmas party, and she bought ho- uh, brought home a uh, waffle cone that was filled with cocoa. And then right. it had marshmallows on top, and it was wrapped. And the idea was you poured that into a cup of uh, hot water, and you got hot chocolate. Okay. And you could also put the cone on top. It was one of the gifts. I'd never seen it before, whatever. But it was on the counter. Cool gift. She's not at home. She went uh, skiing to like, Stevens Pass with her friends. I get home I uh, from the gym or whatever the hell it was, and the dog's got this thing almost completely eaten in its mouth. And so I sent a text that said, hey, man, Miles got into that, uh, that hot cone chocolate thing. cone thing. She's like, oh, my God, that's raw chocolate. You need to get him to the vet in, 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 right now. And I'm like, he's fine. He, like, this dog is insane. Like, they don't worry about the dog. She's like, no, you need to get him there now. I'm like, I do not want to spend my Saturday. You shouldn't have texted him. Really. Well, I know, but I didn't know what to do because the dog then had bit me. And so, like, I was wondering... Oh, we're trying to get the food from Yeah. So I want to go see if I could get medical treatment myself because I got puncture wounds on my forearm from where he locked into me when I tried to take a sick. Anyway, so I go to the vet. I'm still bleeding, by the way. I got a Linwood to go to the veterinary clinic up there. Uh, Take him up there. And I'll never forget this woman. She goes, you know... The one thing you have to remember is, yes, they, they, they will get into everything, but I know beagles, and beagles are one of the most loyal dogs that of any breed. And I said, with all disrespect, could you please tell me the one dog that's not loyal to its owner? What is the one breed? <laughs> what's the, what's the, the one that just takes off? hates the owner? I'm like, right. there is no such thing. All dogs are inherently loyal. That's not a selling point. Like, well, the one thing about this car is it has four tires. Right. <laughs> oh, thanks. You know, like, right. What's the breed right. of dog okay, that's that all hates you, the owner? That's all you got? The dog is loyal? Did you point out, why did it bite me? <laughs> the dog is loyal. Yeah, exactly. Like, I should have got them to bandage me up. I even though you love them, uh, when do you second guess owning your pet? 206-803-ROCK. From the mind of a two-foot-tall talking spokes puppet comes this year's biggest challenge. It's time for Bob's Dare to Compare. The hottest game show on TV that asks, what happens when you compare Bob's to the competition? You get style. You get quality. You get beeps and boops and dings and whomps. And thousands of dollars in savings. Everyone's a winner when you dare to compare with Bob's Discount Furniture. Shop in store or at mybobs.com to play now. This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Whether you love true crime or comedy, celebrity interviews or news, you call the shots on what's in your podcast queue. And guess what? Now you can call them on your auto insurance too with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. It works just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance, and they'll show you coverage options that fit your budget. Get your quote today at Progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Hi, I'm Angie Hicks, co-founder of Angie. When you use Angie for your home projects, you know all your jobs will be done well. Roof repair? Done well. Kitchen sink install? Done well. Deck upgrades? Done well. Electrical upgrade? Done well. Angie's been connecting homeowners with skilled pros for nearly 30 years, so we know the difference between done and done well. Hire high-quality, certified pros at Angie.com. 99.9 KISW. The shenanigans continue. This is the Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. Hey, a video shows a house fire in Tulsa, Oklahoma, ignited after a dog nibbled on a cell phone battery pack. Members of the Tulsa Fire Department responded to the blaze caused by a damaged lithium-ion battery. In the video, a dog is seen chewing on the battery, which ultimately explodes in his mouth, bursts into flames on what appears to be a pet bed. Two dogs then stood by and watched as the fire and smoke filled up the home. According to the fire department, the dogs and a cat escaped uninjured through a dog door. All right. So they know it's time to get out. 
Uh, fire departments all over the country are seeing fires related to these batteries. We want the public to learn about usage, safe storage, proper disposal of these potentially dangerous batteries. Tulsa Fire warns how lithium-ion batteries, the culprit behind fires cross country, can escalate to deadly situations. They are known for storing a significant amount of energy in a compact space. However, when the energy is released uncontrollably, it can generate heat, produce flammable and toxic gases, and even lead to explosions. Many individuals keep these batteries in their homes for convenience, unaware of the potential dangers that they pose. Yeah, I mean, let's get like electric cars, all that kind of thing. Man. That video is wild, though, because the dogs are like looking at it. They're looking at each other. They sit down. They run around. They take a different angle. One dog like peeps behind a chair to look at it like this. <laughs> goes back behind the chair. Comes back on the other side looking at it. They basically definitely had the look on their faces like, uh-oh. Oh, boy. We have really messed up. <laughs> we have really messed up. Uh, Our question, even though you love them, when did you second guess owning your pet? 206-803-ROCK. Hello, Dean. Welcome to the men's room. What up, guys? Hola. Hola. Hola, gentlemen. So when did you second guess owning your pet? All right. So my mom got this dog named Bandit. And since day one, me and Bandit were down. Like, like me, me and him go back like Cadillac full flat. I'm talking about, I'm talking about, I don't know, like, me and this dog, we were awesome. He used to sleep in my bed every night until this one night when he got old, he decided to sleep next to my face, right? And on my, on my pillow right next to my other pillow because I have a double bed. So I'm sleeping there and I open my eyes and there's just this steaming hot turd <laughs> two inches away from my nose. Is that what woke you up? Yeah. And how old was your dog at this time? He was like sixteen. He didn't. He, he didn't mean to. I don't think. But he. But that was the last time he ever slept in my room. Uh, by choice. I mean, did he not want to go back there again, or did you just say that's the end of that? No, I said that's the end of that. If the dog defecates next to my face, I'm sorry. I'm not going to have that dog in my room anymore. Hey, look, I bro, think that's fair. I'm right there with yeah. you. Like that, all you got to do is not take an S in my bed. I don't think that's a big ask. Exactly. But how much longer exactly. did the dog live after that? Oh, another five years probably. But he was he 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 wasn't in good. He wasn't in good standing when he went out. He was like 16 years old, like I said. So yeah. Does the dog lived to be almost 21 years old? Your dog did? No, I'm asking you. You said your dog lived about another oh, yeah, five yeah, years yeah, after 15. that. Okay. Yeah, right. yeah, 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 damn near. Wow. Uh, as far man. as Chewy goes, Chewy was notorious. Both, All three of those dogs notorious for using the bathroom in the home. No matter what you yeah. tried to do, you could not break them. But Chewy was the worst. And it, back to the Christmas holiday season, um, we had a tree up uh, because my two kids are Jewish. Uh, so we had all these presents that were wrapped very nicely, and they surrounded underneath the tree, right? Yeah, you know, and it was, and I never, I never took too much stock in the tree itself, other than the fact that my cat Larry would occasionally get in there and knock some balls down, so I had to keep like oh, the course, lights yeah. a little bit he higher. And that's what cats do; they got to yeah. fight those trees. But you know, but it was this nice pile is building all the way around the uh, Christmas uh, tree as we get the gifts, and you know, individually wrap them, and the pile's getting bigger and everything else, and. Christmas Day comes around. The kids are there. We go downstairs to open packages. In the meantime, Chewie's been being real well about her bathroom habits inside. Right. Which normally I'd find a puddle someplace or I'd find a couple turds in a corner or whatever the deal is. This is not happening at this time. So we start slowly taking the packages and the presents out in the morning. And I realize there are four different boxes that have giant dried turds <laughs> on the top of every single the entire back perimeter where uh, all like the flat clothing boxes yeah. were and everything she was just going back there and okay so two of the items were clothing items that had to be taken back because the urine had gone through the wrapping paper do they the wrapping that paper back? the box and through that tissue paper on top where yeah. they wrap the clothes and then down into the clothes they'll take those clothes back we returned the clothes I will just say that. Uh, Without mentioning why, I'm guessing. It's Nordstrom. They will take back anything. That's true. Oh, Nordstrom. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's that, that, that's the bottom line. We took everything back to the rack that got peed on. Uh, the poop boxes survived. But I'm just like, 
here it is. And you know the skirt you put around? Yeah. Then yeah. in between all the presents that were the, were the little gaps were all the other turds that had fallen and uh, rolled down. Yeah. So the entire bottom uh, skirt, I guess, tree skirt, that had to be completely thrown away. When I picked that thing up, there was a... <laughs> Oh, you're a mean because, and then the smell hit. This is Christmas morning. <laughs> Merry Christmas! Now by the, way. the entire room reeks of stale urine. You know, and I'm at this point in time. I got bacon on the stove, and that can't even cut through <laughs> right. the smell of the urine. It's also December. The sliders open. The windows are open. I'm just like, oh my! So every single package we had to pee and poop inspect. <sighs> to make sure that it wasn't soaking wet with urine. Uh, like, okay. I woke up. I woke up once on a Christmas day with the girl I was dating. Her small dog. Same thing. He's on the bed, which isn't that unusual. But she's right. like, "What is that smell?" And he had pooped on the in the bed. Mm. But same thing. It's just like it's Christmas day. It was yeah. Christmas as well. It was Christmas day. Yeah. I haven't had any. Well, Christmas I put a surprises. diaper on him. Actually, happy, happy birthday. birthday. Rainbow Janet. I will. The one time I was really pissed at her. Just every time I went into the basement. It started smelling like cat pee, right? So I'm checking out the litter box. We just we cannot figure out what it is. And this is like a week. And I'm going around the house looking at everything. I'm like, there's nothing wet. You know what I mean? I don't know where she's peeing, but nothing smells like cat pee except cat pee. So about a week later, I'm now vacuuming. I'm upstairs. Now I'm going to lug this freaking vacuum down to the basement. I'm going to vacuum downstairs. We have this long table that kind of fits along the back of our couch, okay? And under that, my wife had three baskets, and in each basket... It was just stuff full of blankets. And these are really nice blankets that she spent a ton of money on. They're very warm, blah, blah, blah. And the cat had taken a habit of sleeping in there, which we totally understood, right? Big basket of comfortable blankets. I slide them out of the way so I can vacuum under there. And I realize she has peed in all three of the baskets. So the thing that had been stinking were all of these expensive-ass blankets that are coated in cat pee, but same thing. And it melted, like, through the bottom of the basket. You can't get that so, out. No. So when I move the baskets, I'm like, oh, my God. So this, it's not even really a puddle. It's more of a slick spot at this point. Mm -hmm. But the slick mm -hmm. spot is almost five feet long and about three feet deep because the baskets have just been dribbling this thing out. So I grabbed the basket. And look, we got rid of the stink because I, I had to go down there with all kinds of Lysol. We have a uh, steam mop thing. Doing all this kind of crap. But we had to throw all the blankets away. I thought my wife was going to kill the cat. It's the only time I've seen her angry at the cat because she's like... Do you know how much money those blankets were? And look, this is a true statement. My wife and I do not have money conversations. I say, look, do not tell me how much things cost because I know I'll lose my mind, right? So she goes, they were very expensive. I said, I, I know they were very expensive. Do not give me the dollar amount because I might skin the cat. But we had to throw all this crap away. But then it's outside. And long story short, in about another four days, we ended up calling 1-800-JUNK, all right? And we've used them before. Great service, and they show up, and we had some other crap in the garage and all that. And last thing we kind of, oh, uh, and these three baskets. And the guy's like, those look like a really nice blanket, really nice basket. And he picks it up. He's like, oh, Jesus. Yeah. Like, oh. yeah. Yeah. Sorry, man. It's just like, good God. Like, there you go. Even though you love them, when did you uh, second guess owning your pet? 206 803 Rock. From the text line, to make a good point, a lot of people overlook this. It says, I second guess owning our dog when I realized we still had a toddler in diapers, both of whom get into everything that's not there. So the dog would eat the baby food, and the baby, of course, would eat the dog food. Yeah. Someone else says, we have seven pit bull mixes. Seven. Don't regret finding and rescuing every single one of them. All of them but one were abandoned. Only one we actually got from a rescue. But I will admit, we've definitely gone through a lot of remote controls for the Roku. Hmm. Yeah, not yeah. remote control, man. Come on. Some dogs just focus on something and they just have to destroy it. I mean, I get it as a puppy because they just don't know. And just like, like you were saying earlier, Miles, a toddler and a puppy are much different in the sense of if it fits in their mouth, they believe it's edible. Yeah, and a puppy Everything. can almost understand you more so than a baby. Right, I will that's give them the difference. That. They, the, they do. The puppy picks up they your do vibe. Pick up the the tone that you're. But using. when your dog does that, that's when I get pissed, right? So my dog. The only thing my dog will eat now, again, my wife's underwear, or as I call it, pants candy. But uh, because she doesn't eat my stuff, I don't care. I know it drives my wife mm -hmm. crazy, and probably once every two weeks it'll be like this massive pile of brand new underwear still in the package from Target, and she's like, look. I don't buy nice underwear anymore. I used to go to Victoria's Secret and buy, you know, these really nice blah, 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 blah. But then the dog eats the crunch out. So I'm just buying grandma panties and that's it. Uh, to, to pile on to dogs that are getting into things that they aren't supposed to, my dog has a, a, a habit from time to time. And I heard him in, in our bedroom doing this where he, he'll grab his lamb chop toy or maybe even a dog treat. And then he will jump up onto our bed and he will.
will bury it on my side of the bed. <laughs> I don't know why it's just this thing. I'll hear him like whining when he's in there. It's just a sign that he's just crazy happy, but he'll bury it and he'll just shove it in my pillow and bury it. So I hear him doing this and I kind of walk over to the bedroom and I look and see him doing it just, you know, because it's fun for me to watch. And then he puts something down and it is bright and it is yellow and I have no idea what it is. My wife was cleaning out the fridge earlier that day and she had left the garbage bag kind of sit out maybe to, for, for me to take it outside, whatever. But he had gotten into it and grabbed the massive stick of butter that she had thrown out and then jumped <laughs> oh, in the oh, bed oh, and buried no. it on my pillow. <laughs> I have pulled lamb chops and I have pulled other duck on dog treats out of there. Oh, no, a full I'd, stick of butter. Yeah, I'd, I'd <laughs> stick a different one. I used to keep butter out on the counter. Yep. Uh, with, with a hood on it. And they knocked it over and ate the, they licked the, yeah. it looked like it went through the washing machine. Yeah. It looked like butter had never touched it. Yeah, they look it clean. Oh, man, it, it was had a sheen on it. I mean, it was as clean as it's ever been. By the time I looked at it, I was like, I'll be damned. And, and I kept waiting for the backside to be bad, but fortunately, it, did, it never, I never got an oil slick or anything out the backside. I had a conversation with my wife probably about a year ago that we found this out. Uh, I knew, so I go to work. I know we had a full stick of butter on that kitchen island, right? I get home from work. I'm like, babe, what did you make today that required a stick of butter? Started calling her Paula Dean, right? And she's like, oh, no, that wasn't me. That was your dog. I'm like, what are you talking about? She's like, she got up there and ate the entire stick of butter. And as soon as I said her name, she made it a point to just swallow it all. Like, mm -hmm. if I'm getting in trouble, right. I'm going down with everything. So now the butter, it's in this one place that she can't reach. Yeah. But if we if we don't move it to the... And it's weird. It's so habitual. It's like defensive now. living. What well, is? Because every time I go to you work know? now, and this is true, like the last... Because I always go out through the side door, never through the front door. And so you walk through the kitchen, and I really habitually, my hand grabs the butter and just slides it to like the sweet spot where I know she can't get mm -hmm. it. Oh, I, I, yeah. I, had a, I had a dog dog pile of crap, all right? An entire pile of crap. I look in there, there's pieces of plastic. Mm -hmm. And there's little sheets of stuff. And I'm like... What in the hell is this? And I could not put it together. I'm like, what did this dog eat? And I looked to the back, and I recognized. Do you guys remember breath strips? Uh, with the oh, nasal the little, thing? Yeah, yeah squares. You put like a little thing in there, right? Oh, yeah, and it yeah. it came in like a little box, a plastic box, maybe looked like, I don't know, dental floss. Yeah, sort of. yeah. Yeah, okay. He ate the entire one of them. He well, ate the plastic. He ate all the way through. I don't know if it was the mint. I don't know what the to hell. To be was. fair, they're minty fresh. I, if I'm a dog, well, I'd be like, still, that's kind of cool. He chewed through the entire thing. He ate the entire thing. <laughs> he swallowed the plastic. Did his breath smell? Because I'm looking at the crap, and I'm like, what is that? I can't even figure out what type of food is packaged. Right, right, right. <laughs> I ate breast strips. Even though you love them, uh, what did you second guess owning your pet? 206-803-ROCK. Hello, Brandon. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, Victoria. Hola. Hola. So uh, it, it's more my wife, but when I first got my wife, I, you know, I'd been married to her for 20 years. But uh, when I first got with her, I had this little mentee. Her name was Mary Jane. And she absolutely hated my wife. Well, every morning she had it down to the T where every morning she would defecate right where my wife put her feet. <laughs> nice, piling, steaming, warm pile of yes, ma'am. Why do you think it was he jealous? Yeah, she she did. Well, she, I raised her. Like when she was born, I would I helped her be born. I everywhere I went, she was carried around in my hoodie pocket. Like she was my little my little sidekick. Then I got my wife, and she just was not having it no more. Well, look, man, I'm gonna tell you, if you're the kind that carries your dog around in a pocket, that dog's going to be jealous of anyone that that takes your time. Right. I mean, that's, I mean, to me, look, I just, I don't carry the dog around. It seems like babies, sometimes dogs can break that a little bit. Because they smell like you. Exactly. That, I think that's they're, all the difference. They're part of the process as far as. I, Plus, I, I, they've been smelling that baby in your wife's right, womb yes. much longer than you've known the yeah, baby. I mean, they, they are very aware of what's going on in, in a woman's belly at that point in time. Because so. they go straight between the legs and it's like, the dog knows you're pregnant. It's like, yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm like, but the dog smells life between your legs, right. man. And can hear and can sense and all those things. So they have a, they have a pretty good... They, dogs probably know the sex of your baby before the mm. doctor figures it out. It's a boy. Yeah. Wait, why are you going to... The, it's just a boy. Based, just based on the smell. All whatever. you hear is... Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. trying to tell you it's a boy. Don't waste your mind. Okay. Even though you love him, uh, what did you second guess owning a pet? 206-803-ROCK. Hello, Rebus. Welcome to the men's room. Hey, guys. Hola. 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 So, um, let's see. This was not me because I did not want pets, but my ex-wife has always, always wanted dogs. And 
So she, of, of course, we ended up with two Boston Terriers. Oh, God. And, um, yeah, and they weren't so bad other than this one night that I cannot ever get out of my memory. Um, we, uh, let's see, we worked opposite shifts. She worked a night shift, and I worked early mornings. And so I was, I had about 15 minutes, maybe half an hour before I had to go into my office. And I am woken up to the sound of diarrhea splashing out into this, mm. this dog's kennel. And then licking noises. Ah! And, and then vomiting noises. <laughs> and then more diarrhea, then more vomiting, then more, you know, licking. And, and I'm going out of my mind. And, and because of the fact that I, I wanted kids, I did not want dogs, and I was, I was getting dressed to, to go to work, I left it for her. And <laughs> it, it went on probably 15 minutes to half an hour, just continuously i couldn't get them to stop i had a pillow over my head and i was just begging god to kill me <laughs> so i was begging god to kill me. <laughs> kill me so diarrhea eat diarrhea puke it up more diarrhea yeah. did eat- she you said ex-wife ex-wife yes does and she have the dogs I, does she still have the dogs she still has the dogs actually one of them has died she's got another one she always has to have two boston terriers at the time. Oh okay. and do you ever see the yeah. dogs I, I guess you probably do. don't see her at all anymore no, no, no. I, I, I see them all the time, actually. Okay. No, actually, we, we get along okay. I, I go over there and hang out with my kids and, and hang out with her. Sometimes. Oh, so you had kids so, You like, had kids as well? Yeah, we got a 22-year-old who's like seven inches taller than me, six foot five, and a 14-year-old that's my height. Well, at least you got your kids, right? Yep, yeah, yeah. Well, the one and, thing is, kids... And we get along fine. Yeah, when you crate your kids, they can poop and pee all they want. You don't care. Yeah, and the yeah. one thing about your kid in the crate, they don't need to poop. No. That's why I appreciate <laughs> yeah, exactly. it. exactly. Just slide them a piece of cheese. Shut up. <laughs> Uh, even though you love them, uh, what did you second guess owning a pet? 206-803-ROCK. This is NSSF, the Firearm Industry Trade Association. It's Gun Storage Check Week and National Suicide Prevention Month. Securely storing firearms can help prevent suicide. Use lockboxes, safes, and locks to deter unwanted access. Learn more at GunStorageCheck.org and enter to win a gun safe. That's GunStorageCheck.org. If you or someone you know is struggling, call 988 the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. It's warming up, folks, and about time to turn on your AC unit and cross your fingers. Or you can give up that moment of truth and switch to an American Standard heat pump system like I did. My place is on Comfort Autopilot thanks to American Standard. Energy efficient and reliable, my heat pump keeps things cool like the Arctic in the summer. And with energy incentives, I was able to save. Ready for the future of comfort? Learn more at AmericanStandardAir.com slash electrification. From the mind of a two-foot-tall talking spokes puppet comes this year's biggest challenge. It's time for Bob's Dare to Compare. The hottest game show on TV that asks, what happens when you compare Bob's to the competition? You get style. You get quality. You get beeps and boops and dings and whomps. And thousands of dollars in savings. Everyone's a winner when you dare to compare with Bob's Discount Furniture. Shop in store or at mybobs.com to play now. You've heard the saying, better, faster, cheaper, you can only pick two. But when it comes to customer service, AI is changing everything. Intercom's AI-first support platform won't make anyone compromise. Customers get a 70% faster first response time, and half of those questions are resolved instantly, which gives agents more time for the complex issues. And leaders get 31% more efficient teams and happier customers. Better, faster, or cheaper? Go ahead, pick all three. Intercom, AI first customer service. This is NSSF, the Firearm Industry Trade Association. It's Gun Storage Check Week and National Suicide Prevention Month. Securely storing firearms can help prevent suicide. Use lockboxes, safes, and locks to deter unwanted access. Learn more at GunStorageCheck.org and enter to win a gun safe. That's GunStorageCheck.org. If you or someone you know is struggling, call 988, the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. What kind of programs does this school have? How are the test scores? How many kids do a classroom? Homes.com knows these are all things you ask when you're home shopping as a parent. 
That's why each listing on Homes.com includes extensive reports on local schools, including photos, parent reviews, test scores, student-teacher ratio, school rankings, and more. The information is from multiple trusted sources and curated by Homes.com's dedicated in-house research team. It's all so you can make the right decision for your family. Homes.com. We've done your homework. From the mind of a two-foot-tall talking spokes puppet comes this year's biggest challenge. It's time for Bob's Dare to Compare, the hottest game show on TV that asks, what happens when you compare Bob's to the competition? You get style. You get quality. You get beeps and boops and dings and whomps. And thousands of dollars in savings. Everyone's a winner when you dare to compare with Bob's Discount Furniture. Shop in store or at mybobs.com to play now. Today, customer service teams have to do more with less. More work, less team. More expectation, less budget. But AI is changing everything. Intercom's new AI First platform upgrades support for everyone. Customers get more answers, less waiting. Agents get more interesting work, less busy work. And leaders get more efficient teams on less additional headcount. So if you want less of this, it's time to get more out of your support platform. Intercom, AI First customer service. What's up? It's your boy, the Ted Smith from the men's room. And did you know I have a podcast? Well, I do. The podcast. New episodes uploaded every Wednesday on the Odyssey app. Into the men's room with Miles and Thrill. A young woman was left heartbroken after finding out her boyfriend had been cheating on her. All thanks to his pet. The 25-year-old shared how her boyfriend's parents named Percy kept saying another woman's name over and over and screaming about loving her. She is not sure if she should fully trust the parrot, but she's got a gut feeling about it when she saw her boyfriend's reaction to the bird's chatter. She shared her story on Reddit and said, I found myself in the most strange and confusing situation. Imagine this. During a family get-together at my boyfriend's parents' house, their parrot, Percy, accidentally let slip a sensitive issue. It seems Percy has learned about an alleged affair involving my boyfriend. All night, Percy kept screaming about him loving another woman named... Jess, that is not my name. I asked my boyfriend what the bird was talking about. He just laughed it off, calling it crazy. What a funny bird. However, as the night went on, I noticed my boyfriend nervously checking his phone, always leaving it face down, which he never does. In fact, he used to let me use it occasionally, but now he does not. So she confronted her boyfriend, asking, who is Jess? His response was to get angry and call her insecure. She continued, I doubled down mentioning how he's been acting avoidant all night, but he just got angrier. His parents tried to intervene and calm us both down, but he got angry with him as well. So I left alone, went home without him, haven't spoken to him since last night. Uh, Feeling lost, she did turn to Reddit for advice and the users. Am I being insecure? I just don't know what to do because I tried to get the truth and it failed on me. One user shared their experience. When my ex suddenly changed his lock screen code on his phone and suddenly took it to the bathroom with him or upside down hiding the screen from me, I knew that that was a tell. Yeah, look, man, if the bird's screaming, I love you, Jess, come on, do the math. I think that there can't be a tell if you take your phone in the bathroom. I mean, a lot of people, well, I mean, if you're changing your screen, whatever. I think the face down thing. Like, yeah, yeah I know. I'm, just, I'm just saying. But like, the bathroom, right. everyone I know takes the phone to the bathroom. Yeah, where else are you going to tweet? Even though uh, you love them, uh, when did you second guess owning a pet? 206-803-ROCK. What percentage of all tweets do you think originate while someone's sitting on the toilet? Like, if you go to Twitter, is, is it 50% of the, and look, not if you're commenting on you know, political stuff and all that. It can't that. be that high, but I bet it's at least like 15 to 20%. You think it's that high? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good to know. Uh, one quick text here. It says, my dog ate my $300 vibrator and numerous other silicone sex toys. I don't know what it was about the silicone, but we have to keep all our toys out of reach and locked in drawers if they have any chance of survival. Let me ask you this. Had you used the sex toys? If you've used the sex toys, it's not about the silicone. It's about your stink that's on there. I mean, because look, my wife and I have sex. The dog definitely is going to eat her underwear. There's no doubt about it. 100% of the time. We would have sex. We would go, like, get a glass of water. By the time we walked back to the bedroom, she had chewed and or ripped a hole in whatever wet spot might be there. Mm-hmm. So we realized, like, I don't know what it is about sex, but dogs seem very, very attracted to the stink that two people make. All right. Well, the, um, similar bedside drawer uh, <laughs> in my bedroom. Again, 
all of the kitchen uh, drawers and cupboards have childproof things because of these two dogs. Right. Okay. I get home one night and the drawer is open. But this drawer is also the uh, intimacy drawer, so to speak. Yes, the intimacy drawer. On her side of the bed. All right. Uh, Whether I'm there or not, intimacy uh, side of the bed table. Right. Uh, Unbeknownst to me, uh, my wife also, um, I have a habit of getting really high and then eating sweets and uh, saltiness. So my thing is, like, I like a little chocolate. A potato chip would be wonderful at the same time. Uh, Something to drink. I am in hog heaven. She knows this, and she, I found out, would buy chocolate for herself and put it in that drawer. In the intimacy drawer. In the intimacy drawer. And she would buy, she loved dark chocolate. And, yeah, uh, I bet she does. The Theo <laughs> chocolate, the Theo chocolate bars. Yeah. Sure. Used to be in Fremont for a while. Bigger chocolate bars, mm-hmm. so to speak. Uh, this dog ate three of them. Jesus, man. One had coffee in it, uh, which I don't think is the worst thing in the world for dogs. Well, it's probably not but, worse but than the chocolate. To, right, as I say, it's already all, eaten the worst thing Back it can. to all dark chocolate, and this came out with a tinfoil. Oh, God. So that's how you figured out the two. No, wife. no, I saw the rest of the wrappers there. Ah, I mean, okay. But, but, but also, you know, it wasn't fully picked clean. I mean, that dog ate through three candy bars. She's like... I was like, how many did you have in there? And she goes, I had three. And I was like, man, I see one basic wrapper. Yeah. That's it. I mean, I see one wrapper maybe. I'm like, that dog ate all three of your chocolate bars. Did she leave the sex toys alone? Yeah, I'll totally. Huh. So it's all about the chocolate. I mean, at the end of the it's day, the that's cost efficiency. Yeah, if you either replace a sex toy or a, or a chocolate. Yeah. But this was these were these drawers did not open easily. So uh, the fact that, that do- the dog basically pulled the handle on the drawer. Oh, open. yeah. Even though you love them, uh, what did you second guess owning your pet? 206-803-ROCK. Hello, Tamara. Welcome to the men's room. Hello, fellas. Oh, yeah. (laughs) So, we got our daughter a dog when she was 12, a little dachshund. And we proceeded to try and crate train him in the evening. So, when everyone was in bed, he was in the crate fine. So my daughter and I would swap nights, and she'd have him for a while, and then I'd have him. One of the nights that I had him, he proceeded to whine and whine and whine and whine and whine, and my husband's like, just take him out of the crate and put him on the bed. I said, you are going to regret this. You don't even know how bad. So I put him on the bed. He's been on the bed ever since, but he would, when we would try to get physical, he would think it was a threesome and start <laughs> to include himself. And so we would put him on the floor. He would whine and bark, run circles around the bed. It was, let's just say it was very distracting for a woman. <laughs> it's distracting and, for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And so now our kids are older. We still have the dog. He's 12 years old. Our son is 31. Our daughter's 25. They go out, have drinks with them and their spouses. And I find out that we are part of the conversation or a topic of the conversation. And because what we would do is we would say, hey, when do you guys need to have the dog tonight so we can get a good night's sleep? Well, they figured out every time that we asked them to have the dog, we were having sex that night. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, of course you are. (laughs) And this was every time you guys had sex, the dog was trying to get involved? Oh, gosh, yeah. For like the first three years. What yeah, do you think it is about of, that? Because my dog will, you know, we'll start having sex, and I, you feel the bed kind of go thump, and we really, the dog has jumped on the bed. Now, the dog's not really yeah. trying to join us, per se, but I'd prefer not to have the dog see three inches away from my face staring at me. As we're trying, yeah. the same thing, so I have to put my hand, like, on her chest. You shove her off the bed, and thunk, hits the floor. And within a minute, boom, back on the bed again. Yeah. And it's it's the weirdest thing. Like, <laughs> dude! You know what we're doing. You've seen this before. You know we don't want you up here for this. Why do you do this every time? It's almost like they want to ruin it. Yeah, well, I think they just, you know, I want to be a part of the family. Are pack dogs. Yeah, I know. I mean, I have a lot of good friends, it's but I'm not trying to hunt my Yeah, own. if the dog's on the bed, I'm like, we got to mm-hmm. stop. Get that dog off the bed. Yeah, it's one thing yeah. if the dog was already on the bed and we started having sex. I go, I get it. But it's like, dude, you were on the floor. You were not paying attention. Your husband, we had sex, and now you're on the bed. Your husband's a packing dog. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So you still have the dog. Can you, If you were to have sex with your husband tonight, would the dog still try to join? No. He's grown out of that. He lays on the floor on a special blanket, and he waits for until we're done, and then he knows when we're done, and he's like, 
Okay, can I get on the bed now? <laughs> All right. Okay, well, you've, you've but sex does trained he, the dog. Does he get on the bed yeah. where you had sex, or he's just content to be on the bed? He's just content to be on the bed. All right. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my dog yeah. wants to do the, uh, you know, flop and roll and get the scent. And it's like, no, 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 you don't need to smell like vagina. I don't know why that's so important to you. Yep. Even though you love him, uh, what did you second guess owning a pet? 206-803-ROCK. Hello, Ryan. Welcome to the men's room. Hey, how's it going, guys? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Doing well, Ryan. Thank you. Good. Um, so I'm a pretty active guy. I have a husky. She's about five years old. Um, I could be in the garage just setting up to go mountain biking, or I take her tubing. She has her own tube to float, to mm-hmm. float the river and everything. And she'll, she'll lick the paint off my doors if, I, if I'm taking too long because she'll get so anxious. What? So it, hap- it happens all the time. So if I were to come into your house, would there be just a lot of worn-out spots on the wall or doors? Doors, yeah, everywhere. There's a puddle, a puddle of drool on the ground, and she's just looking at me like, you wait, you took way too long. That's how you're leaving me. Now, are Huskies as high-maintenance as I always hear they are? My Husky is very low-maintenance. Like, besides the shedding, she's very, like, she's not loud. She's So she doesn't howl. Every- no, and I I let her I let her out in the neighborhood, and all the kids love her, and she just plays with all the kids. And then I call her, and she's right on right on my heels when I call her. I wonder what it is about dogs that think you're never coming back because you you've never not come back. <laughs> and, you know, they, they, I, I don't understand. If it's five minutes, it doesn't matter what it is. A dog honestly believes that you are never coming back home. Well, my son tried to explain good. this the other day, and uh, I, I think it's maybe something he heard in school. I don't know the accuracy of this, but because I always make the same comment. Every single time. I'm like, Molly, I live here. You know this. I, I, like, my schedule never changes. You cannot possibly be this excited. So, again, I don't know if this is true. My son said, you know, I'd heard in school that apparently, you know, cats, they like you, but inevitably, if you ain't coming home, they don't care. They're fine to figure it out. But dogs somehow get it in their head that when you leave, you just might not return again. And some of them might stem from the idea, idea that deep down they're hunters. So wait, while you're out there, quote unquote, hunting and gathering or whatever it is, they think you don't, you know, you're in danger, I think is how they kind of perceive it. Because hmm. you're a hunter, right? Or a pack animal. And this is, and again, this is a 12-year-old kid telling me what he heard. I don't know if it's true, but it made some sense. So he's like, look, when you, when you go to work, as far as the dog's concerned, you're out there hunting with whatever it is, you know, looking for food and blah, 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 because that would be their instinct, right? Look around, you're always trying to be alert for danger. So when you come home... It's just, oh, thank God. Think about it if you were, I don't know, if you're a firefighter and there's the wildfires going on. You know, but you came home every night to your spouse. She's happy to see you, presumably, because she knows that you're in inherent danger. So according to him, part of the reason dogs freak out so much, they believe that when you are not home, you are clearly in danger. Because that adds up. I mean, because he's like, that's what they would do. If the dog leaves the house, it's sniffing around. It's looking for something to do. It'll fight a raccoon. Boy, I heard a dog get taken out by a raccoon the other night, man. It's like midnight. I'm smoking a cigarette outside, and it's my neighbors, but I'm on the other side of the fence, and I can't see anything, but I hear the dog bark and growl, and then I hear the hiss of the raccoon. Then you hear him get into it, and this bush is shaking back and forth, and the scream that came from this dog, like the raccoon one, I could not see anything. Raccoon wins. The dog so obviously lost. Then you see the light flip on. Neighbor comes running out of the house. Jesus Christ. But he physically had to carry his dog back in the house. And I never asked him what Well, I was like, look, man, it's a raccoon. All right? He lives out here. Everything out here wants to kill him. You live in a house. You ain't going to win. Well, they got little hands, too. So they, they got little hands. Yeah, that raccoon messed they him can up. Work with those Seriously, guys. when I heard this dog scream, I actually felt bad. Even now, though, you uh, love him. When did you second guess owning your pet? 206-803-ROCK. Hello, Chris. Welcome to the men's room. Hey, hola. Hola. Hey, I, uh, I've never called in before, but uh, I heard the uh, subject, and I had to share a story uh, about dogs, you know, being attracted to the scent. This is about uh, 10, 12 years ago. I'm uh, being intimate with my wife, and uh, we're using condoms because we already got two kids, and we don't want any more. <laughs> and I had, uh, I'd have a couple cocktails anyway, so, you know, we finish up, and I, you know, pass out as you do. And the next morning, you know, I'm looking around for the used condom. And I can't find it. I don't think too much of it. You know, maybe I threw it away. Maybe I flushed it. Who knows, right? It was all there. But then not too long after that, I see something hanging out of my little dog's butt. Oh, no. And 
And he went ahead and ate that, and I had to manually remove that. Ah. That's, when I was, that's when I was done with dogs. Done with dogs. <laughs> well, <laughs> do you not have dogs now? I didn't know that... Uh, that they were attracted to the scent like that. I didn't know that might be a problem. Man, <laughs> so. And I don't know if it's every breed, but it just seems to me that when you have sex, and to your point, whether, the, scent, the scent must be familiar. Whether it is the used condom, whether it is a pair of underwear, where maybe your your lady, let's say, yeah. got warmed yeah. up yeah. before you got or into it. Or just like, the fact that it's, it's the gone. time of the month. That time of the month, for sure. Yeah. But I'd like to think our I sex don't... smells different. But either way, man, basically, it seems like anything that's touched a vagina is of real interest to a dog. And to me. So, I mean, I don't blame them. Well, they also eat the, like, poop out of kitty litter, though, too. They'll eat the poop out of kitty litter, but I think in that sense, and I don't know this to be true, but just knowing how dogs smell, they can probably smell whatever the food was inside of the uh, the kitty litter. All right. Actually, because my dog threw up the other day, and uh, I don't know what upset her stomach, but I went went down to the basement, and there's a pile of puke, and it's just her food. There was nothing unusual in there, right? So I'm like, oh, God damn it. So I go upstairs to grab some paper towels, grab all the cleaning stuff. When I come back, the dog's now walking up the stairs. There's no more dog vomit. And she's just licking her lips. And I'm like, God, oh, my. Ugh. Like, thank you kind of for cleaning it up. But also, like, that is so gross. And you want to lick me? Like, that? that's not going to happen for a bit. Even though you love them, uh, <laughs> when did you second guess owning your pet? 206-803-ROCK. Hello, Wendy. Welcome to the men's room. Hi. Hola. Hola. So um, this was uh, about uh, 10 years ago, and my dog was about six at the time. And uh, she was one of those that we got early. So she was only like four and a half weeks old when we brought her home. Damn. Um, because there was uh, issues with mom was going to had had too many puppies. And so anyway, so she was always a little neurotic. And uh, we had done a $300,000 remodel to our house. We did our entire upstairs, gutted it down to the strip, to the walls, to the to the bare studs, everything. And uh, we had to get a new water heater put in. And my husband thought he was being smart. And uh, normally, Abby was in the room by where the water heater was going in. Well, he put her up in our bedroom that day, um, thinking that that would keep her as isolated from the noise as possible. When we got home, she had eaten all of the molding oh. off of the door frame on both doors she had destroyed the door handles themselves by trying to open them and she had destroyed the doors themselves so well over 2500 3000 if not even more dollars worth of damage after you just went 300 what, what, grand what, what, what into the type hole. of uh, what type of dog she was a black lab golden retriever man. <laughs> all right cuz that beagle uh, beagle that would eat through the door frame on the garage and on the bedroom to right. either get to where the car was or to get into the bedroom. So all of that molding needed to be replaced. Fortunately, I didn't have to replace a door. But, <laughs> but molding seems to be the thing. Because we had a text a little bit earlier, Wendy, where uh, someone was explaining basically the same thing. They just remodeled their home. They had not had uh, floor trim for two years. They finally get the floor trim in, and the floor trim lasted one week before the dog ate it all. <laughs> What is it yeah, about it was the only trim? the noise. The noise is what was making her do it. Oh, really? Yeah, it was the noise. It was the banging. She was so neurotic about noise. It wasn't. It wasn't any other reason. It was the noise. Well, so there's a British survey or study that just came out, and 47 percent, so about half of all dogs. Mm -hmm. Loud noises freak them out. I'm very glad. Well, same with fireworks. Well, my so dog is, well, the fireworks are included in that, and I'm glad that even though my dog is an absolute spaz and freak. Fireworks mean nothing to her. The few times that we have thunder mean nothing to her. So I'm like, all right, at least you're not neurotic. You're just crazy. I do appreciate mm -hmm. that about her. Like, all right, things don't freak her out unless you're an Amazon delivery person, in which case she wants to kill you. And there's a guy who delivered a package probably early this summer. I did not know he was there, and the dog clearly didn't either because she was not barking. So I'm leashing her up to take her out for a walk. And, you know, they take the picture of the package on your front steps. This yeah, should let you know we you dropped know. it off. So... Anyway, I open the door, and the dog, like, lunges at this guy, but I'm holding the leash so she doesn't get to him. The driver, I remember, real calm but still nervous, just goes, oh, S, yes, right? Jumps back. I'm like, oh, sorry, man. He's like, yeah, no worries. He drives off. Take the dog out, like, 10-minute walk. When I get home, my wife is in hysterics on the sofa. I'm like, what the hell is so funny? She goes, this is the picture that the Amazon driver uh, took. And when she turns it around, the picture basically is fangs 
ears up in the air and paws coming at you like Superman. Man. It's my dog lunging at this guy. That's the exact moment he took the picture. <laughs> and you can barely see the package just kind of behind right, her. Yeah. I was like, yeah, that is exactly what Satisfied happened. But your dog room? is super nice, but she is intimidating looking. Oh, dude, if you don't know her, so I've been outside and someone I don't know will walk up the street, even some sales pitch, whatever, and we have like those frosted glass things in the door, and you can see her shadow, and she's jumping like six feet high, and the door's like, goom, goom. The guy's like, Jesus Christ. I said, bro, look, if I open the door, the dog will run out, sniff you, and be fine. But he's like, well, don't do that. I said, no, I'm not going to. But, like, it, she is, seems much worse than she actually is. But if you roll up my driveway and she does not know who you are, it is an issue with her until I open the door. Yeah, but Mike uh, was partying good <laughs> yeah. and hard at the... Uh, oh, Black Raven. <laughs> at Black Raven, right? So I drove my buddy's car and Mike's wife back to your house. Yeah. And uh, my buddy drove Mike's car to your house. But they beat us there by a few minutes. Okay. So, like, your kids are smart. Like, they didn't... I don't think they recognize Mike or Sean. So they're inside. But then your dog's going nuts. So Sean's afraid to knock on the door. That's what's like, <laughs> hang on. I know this. Like, I know your kids. Like, I know the dog enough. I'll go to the side yeah, door. Yeah. But she was fine once we got in there. As soon as you the door, But, like, like, right. She was just like, who the hell are these people? Oh, oh, oh. Even though you love them, when did you second guess? Owning your pet. 206-803-ROCK. There are any number of reasons you might consider selling your home. That's where an agent who is a realtor comes in to navigate the process to sell your home in a way that's right for you. Because that's who we are. Realtors are members of the National Association of Realtors. From the mind of a two-foot-tall talking Spunks puppet comes this year's biggest challenge. It's time for Bob's Dare to Compare. The hottest game show on TV that asks, what happens when you compare Bob's to the competition? You get style. You get quality. You get beeps and boops and dings and whomps. And thousands of dollars in savings. Everyone's a winner when you dare to compare with Bob's Discount Furniture. Shop in store or at mybobs.com to play now. From the mind of a two-foot-tall talking Spunks puppet comes this year's biggest challenge. It's time for Bob's Dare to Compare. The hottest game show on TV that asks, what happens when you compare Bob's to the competition? You get style. You get quality. You get beeps and boops and dings and whomps. And thousands of dollars in savings. Everyone's a winner when you dare to compare with Bob's Discount Furniture. Shop in store or at mybobs.com to play now. Coastal Farm and Ranch. We're just what the country needs. These deals are working hard to save you money. From August 28th through September 3rd, save 15% off Balin stock tanks, $200 off black diamond log splitters, and find big discounts on shoes for the family. Coastal Farm and Ranch, we're just what the country needs. Make the most of your Labor Day weekend with Coastal. 99.9 KISW. The men's room returns with Miles and Thrill. Win your share of $100,000 cash with the Odyssey app. Just download that Odyssey app. Sign in, create an account, listen for one hour to KISW for your chance to win. I should uh, change that. Win your share of $99,000. You're right. As uh, Jenny uh, picked up $1,000 listening to the men's room. She mm. says she uses the app when she travels to the eastern part of the state. Correct. Yes. It can be done. Just sign in, listen for one hour for your chance to win. Our question, even though you love them, uh, when did you second guess owning your pet? 206-803-ROCK. Uh, a couple of quick texts here. We were talking about cats or uh, dogs eating cat poop. We don't know why. Somebody said cat poop has a high salt content the dogs love. The next text says, my dog used to burp in my face after eating cat poop. Uh, That's not a great one. Uh, it, it keep, man, it keeps you on top of the kitty litter box. So. Yes, it does. And when you hear the cat scratching in there, you get up right away and you take care of it, or else it's going to be another mess. Uh, we were talking about, I was saying the other night, I just heard it, my neighbor's dog just get owned by a raccoon. Somebody here says, uh, my little dog got completely owned by a raccoon, and thrill, I can confirm that the noise that came from my dog is what nightmares are made of. Also... Uh, I had to get a broom to get the raccoon off my dog. I thought for sure my dog wasn't going to recover, but it turns out that 14-year-old Chug is a tough son of a bitch. He's ugly as sin because he now has a snaggle tooth as a result of the fight. Then he adds, ironically, this raccoon used to always come by the house mm -hmm. to eat the dog food. I haven't seen him since the brawl. It's been about six months now. 
And then here's one. We'll understand why you second-guess your pet. Says, when I was a kid in Poland, my friends and I rode our bikes everywhere like you guys did in the 80s. Well, once we went to a forest near my house, and under one of the trees, I found a little dog puppy. I took it home and kept it in the backyard. We had a huge property, so my family didn't find out until a week later. I brought a wolf home. Oh, oh whoa. Yeah. Yeah, you kind of second guess that. Jesus. Okay, so when I got Dr. <laughs> Gomez, Dr. Gomez had been. Uh, That's he, the greatest name ever. He was, he was hit by a car uh, in Muckleteo. In that area, right? So he was either a, not a barn cat, but just a feral cat. I did not know this. But when the uh, email came, would you like to try to save this cat's life? I went, saw the picture. I'm like, ah, that poor guy. Right? Okay. <laughs> All right. So I, I signed up to take this cat. Okay. Now, the cat was run over by a car. So its hips were crushed and his legs were broken. So they fix all this stuff. Uh, he's also got one eye that's completely shot. I'm pretty sure he's half blind. Uh, the other eye kind of worked, so I could see what he's doing. So I bring him home, and I got, you know, like anybody else who's a new parent, I've set up everything. I, I've got what I believe to be a cat tower. <laughs> yeah. The cat couldn't even walk. Uh, I have all, you know, I've got a ledge. <laughs> you have the, a carpet sculpture, yeah, not exactly. a cat tower. I've got a ledge in the window sill. He can't, he can't get it get up. He can't, he can't even get on his legs, right? But then I got the litter box, and I'm like, okay, you know, I, I'm pretty sure... I did not know the cat was feral at the time, but the cat also <laughs> they didn't not, advertise that cat could not really use its back legs. So the cat was kind of army crawling, right? Uh, with the front legs yeah. trying to pull its ass back and like, you know, drag its backside on the ground. So he finally starts. He goes for the litter box. I'm like, yes, yes. So he army crawls his ass into the litter box, right? <laughs> but he, his, his back hind legs are on its side. So he's kind of laying in there on okay. his side. <laughs> But with his legs and his arms popped up, and he, and he I mean, it, he, he had to go, and it was very much a what smelled to be like an anesthesia, very, oh, yeah. very Post, much a yeah. veterinary post-hospital visit. Correct. What one, one of those? Were you like, who? <laughs> what did they drug you up with? Everybody okay? And it was like a, you know, just like right on the side of the plastic, <laughs> nowhere near the thing. And he's in there, and he's kind of making noise, like, <laughs> and I'm like, oh man, he's he's punching and grumpy there. Uh, so he gets done with this thing, and then all of a sudden. His head flops down into the litter box. <laughs> he fell asleep. He fell asleep. Now he's got crap all over his ass. Uh, he's laying sideways in the litter this box. This is day one. Yes. The entire side of the, you know, half of just like he missed. Did you not, like, see him walk before you got him? I, they said it would take a few days for him to, you know, right. heal up. You gotta believe his legs are bandaged up, you know what I mean? He can't really do much about this, his hip. I mean, in his so, defense, pooping on your side would put me to sleep. He poops on his side, and I swear to you, it was like a, it's like just someone flipped a switch. And I'm like, he just took a crap and fell asleep in the litter box. So I let him sleep in there, and I cleaned up the rim, you know, with some Windex or whatever. And I'm just like, I am in trouble, man. This is, right. this is, not, a, this is not a good start. Even though you love him, uh, what did you second guess owning your pet? 206-803-ROG. Are you still thinking about getting a hairless? I am going to. I, I am going like, to. What's the uh, hold? Because people started sending us like links to, hey, man, if you seriously want a hairless cat, there, there was a few rescues. Otherwise, they cost a, a ton. I'm just, I'm just, you know, I'm looking for a, uh, I'm just looking for a good senior cat that needs a home. <laughs> why? Typically, every time, why do you I'll do tell that, you, I'll though? tell you what. They, they rope you into so much crap with this stuff, and I support everything with those rescue operations. I do, do too, but I don't want but, your crippled ones, way, man. This is the way they do it. Like, okay, yeah. all right. You want, <laughs> you want to go adopt a child or whatever, right? Yeah. They do this. All right, you can have Luke over here, but you also need to take Brad and Penny. <laughs> right. You know, like, no, 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 no. I didn't come in here for three kids, man. Yeah. Uh, that's what they do at the rescue place. Like, you can take this cat, but he's very bonded to his, his mate over here. Oh, did they live together? No, they've just been in crates uh, for three weeks. So they like each other. Like, no, 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 no. Hey, I'm coming here for one freaking cat. Yeah. You know, like, don't pawn the whole place off on me. And then, you know, obviously you pay a rescue fee and everything else. But, like, I did not come here for two cats. It's like anything else, man. Like, <laughs> Why can't you just get, a, a, like, Rainbow Janet, right? Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with her ass. I got, yeah. my daughter wanted a cat, right? She I don't know. Enough, I don't but, know. But, but they don't, you specifically target, it's like the Island of Misfit Toys. Like, those are the only toys you want yeah. to play with are the ones that don't work it's also, the way they're it, supposed it's to. It's also like the, it's also like car ads. Uh, back in the day when uh, when automotive dealers used to put their ads in newspapers, okay? They got this one car there. You can't believe it's $12,999. Yeah. That's the one they're advertising. That's the one you want. You can afford that car. Mm -hmm. They don't have that car. 
So when you get to the car lot, right, you got to buy something else. The car's going to be about fifteen grand by the time you get out the door, right? And that's just the way they get you in the door. That's just part of the that's part of the sales. Yeah, but they, they get do have you one. in the door by advertising a car that so, only has three tires, a busted windshield, so, and yeah. human blood right. in the trunk, so, and you're like, "That's the car so I want." You, you go to like uh, you know SPC, wherever you go. All right, they got this one cat. You're seeing it online. That's the cat you want to go see. You get there, and that cat ain't there. Of course not. That base, that, ba that base model has been sold a long time ago. Now you got this cat with like, his tongue hanging out, looking all like, rah, 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 rah. I mean, so this. But whatever you don't you want, have to you don't take, have to take, take that one. But you will. What, they don't have what you want. But then they'll tell you, okay, you got to take two of these guys. And I'm like, I don't want two of these guys. Is and there then you like pay a, for both of them. I'm like, why no. don't you just adopt a cat that hasn't been, like, physically injured? Or like a kitten, right? right? There's nothing wrong. If there's something wrong with the cat, you'll you'll find out as it grows. Mm -hmm. But we don't know that this cat is insane or will fall asleep when it poops or that its legs don't work. But you specifically, like, what you need is, you know, like they have car facts. You right. need, like, yes. pet facts. So when you go in there, and I, and I right. want to pop up like the fox does in the commercial and say, Hey, Miles, I know you think that cat's cute, but let me tell you something. It's had rabies 17 times, been struck by lightning yeah. three times, and for whatever reason, it won't lick its butthole, but it'll well, lick the butthole of any other right. animal. Well, you'll be like, listen. that's the one I want, because well, it it's got problems. It was with the family for seven years. It's a very good cat. The why they get rid of it? Oh, it sprays. No. 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 No, I know why they got rid of the cat. <laughs> right. It sprays. No. <laughs> no. Oh, but you got to get his brother, too. Like, no, I don't want his brother. But he sprays, too. So yeah, they both spray everything. everywhere. Give us a thousand bucks, four hundred fifty. They bucks honest piece. to God, they should give like, you no, money for no, taking the animals that no. you pick, man. Yeah, seriously. If I ran that place, I'd be like, "Sir, you being serious? You want Gomez?" And you'd be like, "Yeah, the, the feral cat, his hips don't work." Look. And you go, "Yeah," and I'd be like, "Here's <laughs> five hundred bucks for yeah. you for taking this. I mean, like look, pre man, a, dead look, cat off of our I'm hands. a rescue guy. They just don't make it easy. It's almost you just want to go buy one from a litter because it's basically about the same price when you're all said and done anyway. Or can't you, you know? just go? What look? Just go to a shelter, I promise you. Whether they've advertised or not, they got animals. We never looked online. We went to the shelter. Yeah, there that's what I'm saying. First, there was a bunch of dogs there. And I got, and there was one who right. seemed cute until he barked and I saw his eyes. And I thought, there's no effing way. And you would have picked this dog. I mean, it was just, you could look at this dog and say, I am insane. And if you mm -hmm. were there, that would have been your dog. I picked the dog. All right, so all the other dogs, either they're barking at you. Or they're terrified because they came from a bad place, or they seem nervous. The reason I picked, not the dog I have now, but the dog before this one, the reason I picked her, and I told my wife, I said, come here. I said, you see this dog? She goes, yeah. I said, does it look scared to you? She goes, no. I said, does it look excited to you? She said, no. I said, that's the dog I want. This dog is just chill, and it proved to be true. Yeah. This is what you need to like, do, I've man. got a perforated chair, just based on the fact that that cat would lay on its side and just go click, 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 <laughs> and pull and put holes in all the furniture and all that crap. And I'm just like, I didn't buy you to get a new couch. I didn't I didn't get you to get a new chair. Like, I don't... Right. I'm dying. Well, somebody here that you needed a new one, Miles. And you can't declaw cat. Oh, God. No, no, not in the Pacific Northwest. You'll be, you'll be thought of as, as an absolute communist. Well, you somebody know, here said, if you get a kitten, you're asking for trouble. You have to get two so they entertain each other. Okay, look, I've heard this thing. Wow. All right. No, all right. I've heard no. that. I've heard that when you get a kitten, you no. should get two. No. You don't need no. no Rainbow Janet's fine. You know who she's attached to? Me and my daughter That's in particular, right. because when she was tiny, I'd always just scoop her ass up by the belly, right? And just carry her around. Hey. Do whatever. Now to this if you try to touch her stomach, she will kill you. You know what? When, if I touch I can give her a purple nurple. She doesn't care. When I adopted my Lucy kid, man, it was just her and I in the house. We were all yeah. doing fine. Wife came in, she brought in the dog. All of a sudden my my cat just she, she's terrified now, but now she's you know, come to terms with the dog. As soon as we bring in Linus, the other cat, who's got a Cat at home there to play with. No, he's a terror. He sucks. I don't like him. He's a jerk. <laughs> right. <laughs> he, he takes a dump when I go to eat dinner, Miles. Oh, yeah. Well, but hey, he said he pokes uh, his yeah. head out of the Every time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he will wait till I sit oh, down to up, dinner, dude? and then he'll stick his head out, and he'll purse his little lips. <laughs> How's that smell now, man? <laughs> that's right. How's that that's dinner exactly smell now? I mean, that's just evil. Yeah, that's really dude, evil. he'll stare at me. Yeah. <laughs> Even though you uh, love them, when did you second-guess owning your pet? 206-803-ROW. Having fun? You look hungry. I'm going to help you diet. You know what I'm doing? I'm pooping and staring at you. Hello, Ryan. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. 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 So when I called initially, I had two stories, but I have three if you guys have the time, but I'll share the first one. But one involves a bearded dragon, one involves a dog, and the other one involves a pig. But, okay, uh, quite the variety. By the way, how long, <laughs> if I got a bearded dragon, how long would, does that live as a pet? 
dude, they live a long time, man. I've had one that lived over 10 years, but I ended up thinning out my bearded dragon herd because I had too many animals. Do they, when do, you say thinning uh, it out, what exactly does that mean? It sounds like you took it outside and beat it with a shovel. Well, well <laughs> so I gave them to my buddies. So, ah, okay. But, okay. Uh, I, I just started working with adoption rep, uh, reptile sites and got way more. I bit off way more than do I they, did. Do they, show, do they show any signs of knowing you, loyalty, friendship, uh, camaraderie at all? Is there any? A reptile. Yeah, is there any line there? I mean, like, it just likes to lay on your chest. Or I think I it think, might recognize you're they, not a threat. Right. I think they just want your warmth and some bugs or what you know, whatever the case may be. <laughs> warmth yeah. and bugs. Uh, warmth uh, and bugs. Uh, right. I picture a panhandler. Bugs, we'll work for bugs yeah. and warmth. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But uh so I had a bearded dragon that we called Spatso because this dude would eat anything. And we tried to see how much we could feed him and we stopped because he thought he was gonna pop. But uh he ate probably 30 or 40 crickets and a variety of other worms and stuff that we fed him. So long story short, I used to clean their uh, cages with rubber gloves and with the lizards that I had that couldn't climb glass, I'd leave the tops open. So I hung a rubber glove that I'd use to clean up poop on the side of one of his cages and uh, he jumped up and grabbed it. So I didn't see that happen, but the guy with the condom and the dog story brought it back up to my memory and <laughs> oh, I... Joy. Uh, I, I noticed the glove was missing, and I called, or then I looked in the cage, and I could see the ring around that would go around your wrist on the latex glove sticking out of his butt. So, mm. so I, so I called the vet. And I'm like, "All right, here's the case, man. What do I do?" And they're like, "Feed him pumpkin filler, and he should pass it." And I force fed him pumpkin filler, and he pooped it out the next day. Wouldn't it have been dangerous Please, for you to remove it uh, yourself? He said, whatever you do, do not pull on it. Were you like, hell yeah, <laughs> all right, that is good news. That's the best yeah. case scenario. But a rubber glove and a bearded <laughs> dragon in a different scenario, you, know, you never know what you're going to get yeah. into. Okay. You know, you know. All right. <laughs> but, so I'm not a reptile one, guy. I, I, that's no, that's it, not my... Uh, turtles stink. I, I do remember people growing up that had turtles. They just smell like crap. Yeah. Uh, they stink. That's, yeah. Spider that's people. downside is... I had one uh, chick that I knew that had a tarantula in college, and she thought it was the coolest thing in the world. I'm just like, why? Why? I have, I have 13 tarantulas. Why? <laughs> um, why not? Honestly, they're they're weird as hell and they're scary, but I mean, they're kind of cool. They're, Dude, you just, that's you already the you look at it? You just take it out and look at it. I mean, what what the, what the hell do you no, do I with a damn thing? You don't hold them, man. I mean, if you want to, you can roll the dice, but. Well, they, they can be rolled. They they I mean, fish are the same way, right? It's not like you handle your fish. Exactly. But there, you'd also don't say roll the dice. I feel like with a pet, and you go like, you can touch it, but you're rolling well, the dice. Do you feel safer with one tarantula that you can take out and let you know walk on your shoulder, or your chest, or are they all just? I gonna... could take. I could take most of them out, and most of them won't bite me, but I don't. So I have some that are like metallic green and bright blues and purples. Most people think tarantulas are just browns, but there's some pretty stunning looking for tarantulas how long, what how do long, you feed uh, them what, what's a tarantula diet diet uh just crickets millworms uh cockroaches whatever you want to feed them okay and you how long rabbit or rabbits uh rats and stuff like okay, that damn bro how, how, long, how long do they live <laughs> yeah, uh some live about 15 years some, You're kidding. Damn. some can live up for 20 years i wonder what an some average uh live. like out in the wild like what an average spider's lifespan is it's not uh you know in, yeah, a, in so, a little box in a bedroom True world spiders only live about a year, but like old world tarantulas, new world tarantulas, anywhere from 10, 20, sometimes. That's impressive. Longer. Okay. Super impressive. I'm kind of impressed spiders live even a year. There's oh. over 900 different species of tar tarantulas, too, and most people are blown away when they find that out. But I found that out right now. Yeah, me too. <laughs> but, but what was the appeal to make this one variety of spider a pet? Like, no one else has any other spider. Right. It's tarantulas specifically. Big. Tarantulas are bugs. They get, yeah, because they they're so big. big. Pretty much, I, they're I, they're intimidating as hell. But yeah, I know. I think depending cool, you know. depending on the animal, you pick on the size. So spiders are generally small, tarantula bigger. You want it, sure. Yeah, alligators it's big, bad. Correct. You can have a caiman. Caiman, right? <laughs> exactly. What other like, bug does people keep? There's no other bug in the bug world. I oh, I have moths. Oh, man. It's I mean, like, crazy. You should you should look at what isopods, like a little roly poly, the little roly poly bugs. All right. You should look at the market for those on your free time sometimes. Really? Those How is there like, a market like, for that? Like a hundred and fifty dollars for like six of them because there's different species. It's insane. Are you kidding me? 
Yeah, dude, Google so, it. It'll, it'll, the, blow your, it'll blow your mind. Back to what Tim was saying. Is this the equivalent of basically having a fish tank? Absolutely. Okay, so you just really, yeah. they're just no, there. No, you're no, keeping Because my fish and, don't and, freak and, me well, out. You, and you look at them. You. <laughs> but like my buddy that had that came in, like we, you never took it out of that. But it was fun to watch him eat a mouse. Sure. I mean, just but with like a tarantula, like I said, a fish tank, if someone goes, one of your fish is missing, I just say, then that fish is dead. And there's no panic. There's no. If you say, I can't find my tarantula, like, I'm not walking in your house, man. Mm-hmm. Still would be odd, though. What's that? Somebody said a fish, fish from is your missing. fish is yeah. missing. Like, he's not in the filter. Right. Nobody scooped him out. Like, where the hell's the fish? It would be weird. And on some level, you still don't care. Like I said, your fish dies, you flush it down the toilet. Your dog dies, it's a sad thing. See, you know, I, 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 like, look, man, I, I, no, I, I, I would you ever have an, uh, a saltwater tank in your bedroom with an octopus in it? <laughs> an octopus? No, no. 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 <laughs> You're going to wake up, that thing's going to be covering your face. <laughs> right. <laughs> or maybe your junk like the deep. Oh, yeah. sorry. Spoiler alert. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, would I, I couldn't do it. Because I have these eyes looking at me. I'm like, I knew you were in here. And as soon as you're asleep, it's like, yeah, oh, I'm coming to you, get you. Next thing you know, his head's on the pillow beside you. He's <laughs> snoring. <laughs> uh, even though you love him, uh, when did you second guess owning your pet? 206 803 Rock. Hello, Bub. Welcome to the men's room. Come on, stop, bitch. Hola. 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 What's up, guys? First time caller, a long time listener. Hey, thank you, man. So, so, pretty much story is my dog, I found out he's a retard and he bit his own tail off. He bit his own tail off? Yes, sir. Why? Uh, he had, I guess, he had severe heat spots, and he was in his kennel one day, and literally come home one day after work, open him, open the garage up, he escaped out of his kennel, and bit our doorknob in half, and I let him in from the garage, and he's wagging his tail, and all of a sudden I look at the cabinets, and I just see blood spurts everywhere going along the cabinets. Mm. Did you find and, the tail? Oh, that's the funny thing is, I'm like, what is your tail? <laughs> and I went back in the garage. There's about a six-inch piece of tail laying there on the floor. Ah, that is a weird one. I mean, I know obviously, some breeds of dogs, they remove the tail just because, uh, you know, you want to keep a glass on your ta- your coffee table. Yeah, right. So some of those dogs have bigger... <laughs> or, they, or they have a tendency to break their own tails mm-hmm. and things like that. So they'll remove, um, like, Dobermans. Yeah, I grew, I grew up with a... A, a kid and his parents had uh, the giant mountain dogs. Yeah, mm-hmm. Burmese mountain dogs. Right. Or... So the one dog always had tape on its tail, just as they were uh, so obviously. big, it would knock stuff over. And you're right, it would get cuts on it. But also, they're so big that tail would hurt. Yeah, my <clears> dog. <throat> I remember my my old dog. This was a big shepherd I had. And he was fluffy. He was big. Had a long tail. And he lit himself on fire one night. There was a candle on the coffee <laughs> table. Oh, Larry, Larry kind of I didn't agree, But he's just wagging his tail, and I didn't notice it first, man, but some, the dog, like, on all fours, just jumps straight up in the air, tucks its tail, and I see him tucking his tail midair, and I realize it looks like a flaming baton, so I'm kind of laughing, but he basically jumped directly in my lap, and we extinguished the yeah. flames when he landed, and I'm like, dude, yeah. also, just watch where you're walking, when, when Larry, Larry's tail caught on fire, man, it was just like, it was a poof. It wasn't even, you couldn't even see the flame. Oh, it just it burned just, all the hair off. just like it. everything just started to shrink. And I was like, oh, oh. <laughs> so I grabbed it and I pulled the whole way through. Right. And I had all this burnt ass cat hair and heat on my hand. I mean, the smell <laughs> of that was That's absolutely. Awful. And he acted like nothing happened. Of course he did. Because it's your cat. cat was actually pretty calm and decent. But I mean, I was freaking the hell out when I realized what was going on. It just, it, it, it looked like it was just evaporated. Right. I couldn't see flame or anything. I didn't really understand what was going on. Then I grabbed it and was like, oh, God. <laughs> Janked on that thing. <laughs> Who sucks less is uh, coming up, and we got your emails on the way next in the men's room at KISW.com. With an American Standard heat pump system, the future of heating and cooling your home is already here. Bringing constant comfort to your home, American Standard heat pumps are energy efficient, reliable, and ready for tomorrow, today. Plus, making the upgrade from your traditional furnace or AC unit is easier than ever before with home energy offers, rebates, and tax credits. Learn more at AmericanStandardAir.com slash electrification. American Standard. Built to a higher standard. 
From the mind of a two-foot-tall talking Spunks puppet comes this year's biggest challenge. It's time for Bob's Dare to Compare. The hottest game show on TV that asks, what happens when you compare Bob's to the competition? You get style. You get quality. You get beeps and boops and dings and whomps. And thousands of dollars in savings. Everyone's a winner when you dare to compare with Bob's Discount Furniture. Shop in store or at mybobs.com to play now. You don't just live in your home. You live in your neighborhood as well. So when you're shopping for a home, you want to know as much about the area around it as possible. Luckily, Homes.com has got you covered. Each listing features a comprehensive neighborhood guide from local experts. Everything you'd ever want to know about a neighborhood, including the number of homes for sale, transportation, local amenities, cultural attractions, unique qualities, and even things like median lot size and a noise score. Homes.com. We've done your homework. It's Gun Storage Check Week and National Suicide Prevention Month. Securely storing your firearms can help prevent suicide. Use lockboxes, safes, and locks to deter unwanted access. Learn more at GunStorageCheck.org and enter to win a gun safe. That's GunStorageCheck.org. If you or someone you know is struggling, call 988, the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. Brought to you by NSSF, the Firearm Industry Trade Association. With an American Standard heat pump system, the future of heating and cooling your home is already here. Bringing constant comfort to your home, American Standard heat pumps are energy efficient, reliable, and ready for tomorrow, today. Plus, making the upgrade from your traditional furnace or AC unit is easier than ever before with home energy offers, rebates, and tax credits. Learn more at AmericanStandardAir.com slash electrification. American Standard, built to a higher standard. What kind of programs does this school have? How are the test scores? How many kids do a classroom? Homes.com knows these are all things you ask when you're home shopping as a parent. That's why each listing on Homes.com includes extensive reports on local schools, including photos, parent reviews, test scores, student-teacher ratio, school rankings, and more. The information is from multiple trusted sources and curated by Homes.com's dedicated in-house research team. It's all so you can make the right decision for your family. Homes.com. We've done your homework. Coastal Farm and Ranch. They're just what the country needs. These deals are working hard to save you money. From August 28th through September 3rd, save 15% off Balin stock tanks, $200 off black diamond log splitters, and find big discounts on shoes for the family. Coastal Farm and Ranch. They're just what the country needs. Make the most of your Labor Day weekend with Coastal. What's up? It's your boy, the Ted Smith from the Men's Room. And did you know I have a podcast? Well, I do. The Podcast. New episodes uploaded every Wednesday on the Odyssey app. The debauchery rolls on. You're listening to the Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. 99.9. KISW. All right, so who sucks less is coming up the first time for a few emails from the men's room at KISW.com. Oh, you piece. Just give me a second. You've got mail. It'll do it again, Lauren. You've got mail. It's usually once a day. I thought I'll double dip. Oh, let's just get into birthdays, uh, guys. I want to wish my beautiful miracle of a child, Myla, a very happy 10th birthday. So, Mike, how about uh, 10 uh, sound bites of your choice oh. and Coach Ted telling her what it's going to be like being double digits. Uh, love you to the moon, baby. That from Mom and Dad Jeff. Oh, dear Jesus. <laughs> oh, wow. Ten, Mike. <laughs> Please clap. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know what? Happy birthday. She's 10. I'm sure she enjoyed it as well, Mike. Yeah. Uh, 10 years old. So I believe you're growing into fifth grade. Fifth grade's pretty fun. Right in the heart of middle school. Mm-hmm. Get all that stuff down. Now, I will warn you. Some of your friends that are your friends right now, they're going to change a little bit, but that's okay. You're all changing. You're 10. And please, be nice to your parents for the next eight years. 
Guys, <laughs> guys thanks to my uh, son Kevin's 13th trip around the fiery ball of chaos. Uh, Kevin, thank you for keeping your mom and I on our toes with your quick wit, smarts, and providing me license to let our uh, inner 12-year-old self uh, come out again. Guys, let's send him uh, around again with a fart. One fart. One? Turtle, okay. due to time. Uh, turtle sex and Mickey and Goofy talking about what he has to look forward to as a teenager rock on, bitches. Keep doing what you do. That from Sam. One fart. Well, gosh, you turned 13 years old, so the truth is you can expect zits, acne, weird body odor, unfortunate erections, and an appreciation for all rated movies. Yeah. Also, I don't know what's happened yet. But things will be different. Before you know it, you be sounding like Mickey. <laughs> it's always weird when you have that phone call with your buddy and his voice changes. You're like, like, who the hell is this? Yeah, who is this? It's me, man. I don't remember it as much as I remember, like, and I felt bad as it happened to me, then I would do it to my nephew all the time. Mm -hmm. Think it was either my sister in law or my niece. And then one day I call and just like, What's up, Uncle Ted? Mm -hmm. like, damn. Dude, yeah. that, oh, yeah. when I was a kid, I just remember I answered the phone. And uh, so landlines back then, during the summer, both of the parents are at work. Some kind of important call from my mother. So the guy says, hey, can, can you just take down the information? She needs to know this. No problem. Grab the pencil and paper. I take down all the details. The guy even asked me to read it back. I read it back to him. He's like, hey, perfect. And he goes, hey, listen, man, the next time I talk to your mom, I'm going to tell her what a wonderful daughter uh, she's raising. Oh, yep. nice. I'm a guy. Oh, it crushed me. My mom was like, don't worry. But he thought I was a girl. Uh -huh. She's like, it's okay. And it'll crush every little boy. It still happened. I mean, it's a little easier now, I guess, maybe with cell, cell phones. phones. You can see who but placed I the call. But I felt awful when I did it to my nephew. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, today's my partner Kelly's birthday. She was supposed to be starting an epic bike race from Olympia to Portland through the Gifford Pinchot National Forest called the Dark Divide 300. Dark Divide. Along the route, she would have had to defend herself from berry-eating bears, vicious grouse, and a stuck Prius or Tesla along a forest road on which they don't belong. Unfortunately, the Williams Mine Forest Fire has led to the race being canceled. I know she would love a couple of bong rips or maybe uh, uh, the dirty Germans talking about how her 2.4 inch knobby nick tires would feel on the pavement. Uh, yeah. I'll thank you guys that from Andy. <laughs> yeah, I also have something that is 2.4 inches and knobby. My nipples. <laughs> yeah, it's a knobby nick. <laughs> it's just as called Spike. Yeah. I'm sorry to miss your bike race. Maybe you could uh, ride the stationary bike and send your husband come in dressed as one of these animals. Yeah, and what we would do is practice by playing your seat. <laughs> Boo bitches, my now husband Scott takes his 41st trip around the sun today. We finally got to hitched in June. I couldn't be more excited and proud to spend the rest of my life with this man. Uh, most caring, hardworking, and determined people I've ever met. How about the dirty Germans talking about how he will be uh, solely removing the transmission from his truck? And you guys talk all over each other about what it's like being in your 40s. Thanks so much, guys. We are huge fans. Rock on. That from Laura. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what your euphemism removing the transmission from the truck but, but in Deutschland we just simply call that pulling out yeah you know what so uh, you know Chank said transmission yourself but it sounds like by the end of the night some of the fluid might end up on her yeah I'll uh, be in your 40s. Oh, I'll tell you what, dude. I'll do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a great time. Right 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 finally, people have to take the word. But the, the best thing about it, they just don't care what other people are talking about anything. It doesn't matter anymore. It doesn't matter anymore. Nothing about it changes, man. Gentlemen, well, now I've done He's it. He's making noises now. I've got to hit the big 5 -oh. Got to admit that uh, after 50 years, and what with being born two days before Nixon resigned, I think I'm deserving of a good bowl. So let's light it up with a big old bong hit. And the dirty Germans telling me what I can expect for my 50th year on this dirt clawed flying through space liquor and horse from Dennis. Yeah, now that you are 50 years old, I believe one of these things you can expect are unexpected aches and pains for no reason and actually getting a cramp while having sex. <laughs> yeah, also you can <laughs> you can talk down to those other people. You just say, I'm a man, I'm over 50. It's your dumbass. <laughs> Guys, it's my mother's big 5 0. <laughs> Can she get, let's see here, a big guy? How do you know? What are you, 48? A uh, fish sandwich quartet and Coach Ted uh, telling her, uh, telling him what to do before the grandparents come to town. 
Uh, thanks, guys, and happy birthday, Mom. Thank you for literally everything you do for all of us. Can I get a fish sandwich? Oh, you know I gotta eat right. Oh, brother, can I have a fish sandwich? You put the cheese and the tartar on the side. Hmm. I don't know. Coach might have to be serious on this one. <laughs> First of all, it's your 50th birthday. You probably deserve uh, five O's. Uh, <laughs> second of all, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Five uh, O's. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Ikea. Uh, <laughs> all right. If your kids are saying you need advice before the grandparents, I'm assuming your parents get into town, I will tell you this. Your family, you love them. Remember to take deep breaths. Maybe build in some breaks between that and then let them take the uh, grandkids out for dinner and you sit at home. I don't know. Prepare yourself. Batten down the hatches. And remember, you love them. Love. But Charles, want to wish my hubby Troy a very happy 62nd birthday. 19 more days until he officially retires. Unless he plays hooky again. So how about a fish sandwich and the dirty Germans talking about retirement and getting those senior discounts? Thanks, guys. Love your show. That from his wife, Renee. I'll have a fish sandwich. Yeah, the beauty of the uh, senior discounts, you can ask your wife for the 68th position, like George Collins said. You do me, I'll do you later. Yeah, sounds like you're that close to retirement. So enjoy the first, like, six months and then make sure she gets out of the house. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, here you go. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Happy, happy, happy birthday to you, to you, to you. Yaws are Dirty Germans brought to you by Men's Room Original Sausage. Available through Uli's world famous <laughs> sausage, mensroomlive.com, and other fine retailers. Mmm, <laughs> Schweineflash. Now, the Men's Room wants to know Who Socks Last? Hey, time for Who Socks Last. Steve, throw a hole, you bring us three stories from the news each and every week. They all suck. It's up to us so to determine out of the three stories which one sucks the least. Now, if you happen to follow KISW on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, the debate is already underway on Who Sucks Less. Yes, indeed. And that, like I said, all three of these stories involve assault, but somehow you're just not going to care. And some of these stories you might remember from uh, other segments we've done on the show, like this one. You might remember from Profile This, but they say, after responding to a reported domestic battery in St. Petersburg, cops gave this account of the alleged incident. Quote, the defendant threw a diaper at the victim, striking him in the center of his torso. The diaper contained urine, and I like how they say, other feces. There's only really one kind of feces, unless it was someone else's turds in this man's diaper. Anyway, uh, investigators say that the confrontation began when Damien Caston, 18 years old, began arguing with his brother about an ongoing domestic issue. Cops reported that Caston is paralyzed, but ambulatory by using his upper body. After Kasten damaged the walls inside of the home, he allegedly became aggressive toward his sibling and a witness and attempted to throw all these items at them. Now, at that point, Kasten's brother and the witness, they lifted and carried the defendant outside, as they say, for the safety of all. And then they called 911. Kasten then removed his soiled diaper and threw it at his brother, striking him in the chest. The cops add remnants of the diaper were seen on the front porch and on the stomach of the victim. In other words, turds. No weapons were seized by police. Uh, charged with domestic uh, battery, a misdemeanor cast, and was booked into the county jail. He was eventually released the next day on his own recognizance, but his judge has ordered him to have no contact with his brother and granted the accused man a one-time visit to his home in the presence of police to retrieve his personal belongings. All right, his brother's getting an argument. He has an adult diaper, rips it off, hits his brother with it. Take that. Now we have, uh, well, we stay in Florida. So they say angry about the amount of water that our 72-year-old neighbor was using to clean his motorcycle, an 80-year-old Florida woman spit on the man and then yanked his beard. Investigators say that Sandra Rogers, she was in her apartment when she spotted one John Ferrone scrubbing his wheels. Rogers lives in the ironically named Peaceful Lane in the 55 and over Palm Lake Village community right outside of Tampa. Well, Rogers walked over to Ferrone's nearby residence and engaged in a verbal argument regarding his water usage. Rogers used her black flip phone to take photos of the wet spots on the roadway so that she could, quote unquote, report the victim to the complex management. No one is sure who the victim is, but that's what she said. Anyway, 
During the squabble, the five foot three Rogers spit on Ferone, then used her right hand and pulled on the victim's beard. Now, a neighbor who witnessed the confrontation told cops that Rogers was the primary aggressor. Now, Rogers, she was arrested and charged with third degree felony. Ooh. Because it's battery over someone the, over the age of 65. And it doesn't matter your age. Even if you hit someone your own age and you're 80 or whatever, you still get the same charge. So she spent a day in jail before she was free on $100 bond. A judge ordered her to have no contact with Farrell. Okay. And then finally, you might remember this one. We have an ex-con. He's been convicted of attacking his girlfriend with a pink dildo. After she derided him as a, quote, limp D in need of Viagra, 38-year-old Stephen Nerdin, he pleaded no contest to domestic battery, uh, and it stemmed from the violent confrontation earlier this year in the Florida residence that he shared with a 37-year-old victim. He was adjudicated guilty by a county court judge and sentenced to eight months in jail. He was also fined about $920 and ordered to have no contact with the victim. But according to a police report, the victim told cops that she was arguing with Nerdin about the relationship when she declared that he needed an erectile dysfunction medication to address his sexual shortcomings. Nerdin, she said, became irate and retrieved the sex toy from the bedroom shelf and shoved it into her mouth. He also punched her in the eye. A question by cops, Nern claims not to recall wielding the dildo. I feel like if you did throw a dildo, you definitely remember that. So if, you're, your if you're a dude and you grip up on one of those, you know it. Yes, you're going to remember that. So again, we have, uh, let's see, we have the guy who threw the diaper at his brother, complete with uh, feces and urine. We have Sandra Rogers, the 80-year-old woman who spit on and tugged the beard of a 70-year-old neighbor because of his water usage. And then finally, uh, the ex-con who assaulted his girl with a pink dildo because he's got a softie. Uh, I'm trying to determine what would be worse to be hit with. Someone else's spit or a dirty, soiled diaper. I would accept the diaper over the spit. The diaper. What? Yeah. Yeah. Because look, the, look. Ma- the material of the diaper, I want on me the least. But spitting on someone to me is, even though it doesn't cause you any damage, the level of disrespect in yes, my mind. Like, I'd rather is... take a punch to the face than be spit. Well, she's also an 80-year-old lady. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So I'm like... But still, she can't... Well, dude's 72. It's not like he's 27. Obviously, this you know? 18-year-old kid, he's he's obviously wheelchair-bound. They picked yeah. him up and took him outside. So if you're wondering why he was in an adult... under, yeah. I'm assuming, just by the way life works, his brother at some point in time has had to care for his younger brother Clear. and address some of these issues anyway as far as dealing with whatever he had to do from a... You know, bathroom to showering type stuff. Sure. Right? So I'm going to say that one sucks the least because these are two brothers. Yes, he did get hit in the chest with a diaper. But either way, it's just two brothers doing what brothers do. It is Florida. It's a weird sounding story. But I think out of all those, that's the one That's the one that I would pick to be involved in. So yes, be, yes. I guess. I think I'm going with the old lady. It is massively disrespectful to spit mm. on somebody. But also, like, they're in Florida, right? Yeah. Or uh, maybe the other one. I'm no, just, they're all of all these stories all are in Florida. Florida. Yeah. So, like, hey, man, it's summertime. Maybe that dude was using too much water. And also, Florida. if I was that guy, I would have just sprayed her with the hose. Well, keep in mind, she also tugged down his beard. Yeah. I mean, she, she spit on him, but then, you know, grabbed his beard. And I'm just picturing a biker in Florida probably had a lot of beard to grab. Yeah. I'm also picturing, like, he's in an MC. So, like, maybe she got off easy. Okay. Sort of. Yeah, I don't know. I to me that just seems funny watching an eighty-year-old lady tug on a seventy-year-old dude's beard and then spit on him. <laughs> like, look at these. Look at this. Hawk to a. Debate continues on uh, Who Sucks Less if you follow KISW on Facebook, Twitter, and on uh, Instagram. Okay, coming up, we'll drink and tell us with a shot of the day. You are listening to the men's room. It's one thing falling in love with a house, and quite another navigating the world of negotiating, mortgage lenders, and finding the budget that works best for you. Guidance from an agent who's a Realtor can make all the difference, because that's who we are. Realtors are members of the National Association of Realtors. This is NSSF, the Firearm Industry Trade Association. It's Gun Storage Check Week and National Suicide Prevention Month. Securely storing firearms can help prevent suicide. Use lockboxes, safes, and locks to deter unwanted access. Learn more at GunStorageCheck.org and enter to win a gun safe. That's GunStorageCheck.org. If you or someone you know is struggling, call 988, the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. 
With an American Standard heat pump system, the future of heating and cooling your home is already here. Bringing constant comfort to your home, American Standard heat pumps are energy efficient, reliable, and ready for tomorrow, today. Plus, making the upgrade from your traditional furnace or AC unit is easier than ever before with home energy offers, rebates, and tax credits. Learn more at americanstandardair.com slash electrification. American Standard, built to a higher standard. You've heard the saying, better, faster, cheaper, you can only pick two. But when it comes to customer service, AI is changing everything. Intercom's AI-first support platform won't make anyone compromise. Customers get a 70% faster first response time, and half of those questions are resolved instantly, which gives agents more time for the complex issues. And leaders get 31% more efficient teams and happier customers. Better, faster, or cheaper? Go ahead, pick all three. Intercom, AI first customer service. 99.9 KISW. The shenanigans continue. This is the men's room with Miles and Thrill. Win your share of $100,000 on the Odyssey app. Just download that Odyssey app. It's absolutely free. Sign in, listen for one hour. Your chance to win some of that cash. Yeah. All right, so coming in minutes, we will drink and toast with a shot of the day. We do have your headlines on the way of 550. But first, quick check on Mike Hawk and some of the stories and headlines he is not working on. Well, thank you, Miles. Apparently, a new form of relationship known as Tolly Amory is on the rise. I'm glad you know to say that. Oh, yeah, did you see it? No, I I, oh. I saw the headline, tried to say it three times, and I stopped. Well, it's a it's a contraction of tolerance and polyamory. So you, Okay, polyamory. So, right, and that's exactly what it is. You guys know what polyamory is. Basically, you can just... Get after yeah. anybody that 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 floats your boat. Tolly Emery is you're in a relationship with somebody who then tolerates that you are just getting your jollies off with with whoever it is that you need. Isn't that what polyamory would be? I mean, if you I say don't think I'm- you are. I think if you are Tolly Amorous, I think you are with you know you're in a relationship with your wife and then you don't go off with anybody other than your wife. But then your wife's like, I actually like these people over here. So and I go cool, right? All right. Now you don't go fooling around. Like, oh, you so just sit at home and wait. Polyamorous? Part, no, Tolly 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 Amorous. Amorous. Sorry, I missed that So part. one person stays true to oh, the other Oh, well, that's every guy's fantasy when they hear about swingers. Oh, of course. Like, they're like, oh, that must be awesome. Like, so you're cool if I have sex with your wife? They're like, well, no. No, man. Right. 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 Like, that's the tricky part. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> exactly. Tolly Amorous, huh? Tolly Amorous. When you're tolerant of your partner's polyamorous tendencies. Yeah, but, but again, I, mean, I think that you are still dedicated to them. Like you're not, you're not doing any of the running around. I think they are, and you're just fine with you're it. You're tolerant of it, okay? Ha! Huh. I didn't know that had a name. I thought we just called it an agreement, <laughs> <laughs> right? Called yeah. it the dream. Like but Tom everything Jones. needs a name now, Ted. What's that? But everything needs a name now. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> what if she's only messing around with other chicks? Cool. Yeah, I was. Yeah. You still only get the <laughs> one, dude. <laughs> oh, I, oh, All right, whatever. <laughs> we should both go mess around with other chicks. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Two-way street, huh? I don't uh, bring like, you some, you bring me some. Well, you can mess around with other guys. Like, yeah, well, I'm not. No. no. I'm good. Not the I got, same. I got enough dude in my sex life already. We're fine. Yeah. <laughs> I'm good with me. A new study found 20% of pets are suffering anxiety due to their owner's thoughts. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that <ain't> old. <laughs> How bad are your farts that they stress your pet out? Right. These are animals that lick their own butt. Correct. <laughs> but when you do it, like, oh, man. God, that guy stinks. I think it's just that it comes out of nowhere. I think it just throws them off enough. But they can't figure Come on. Yeah. I feel like every animal that farts knows what a fart is. And yeah. you know who did I mean, my dog plays stupid. You know, she'll be asleep. Fart wakes her up. And then she looks at me like I did it. Not this point. Like, no, that was you. <laughs> that was you. That, was you. that is the one that drives me up a wall. Whoa, what happened? I don't know. What was that sound? <laughs> like, it came out of you. <laughs> you know what you did. Like, I fathom you're a dog, but you're not dumb, dumb. You but you know you... that you farted. Your dog ever leave after they do? Because they just can't stand the stink? Uh, there's one, like, all of us did. <laughs> so she was dead asleep on the sofa. We're watching something, man. It's probably like a year ago. And it was just a little. Poof. And within five seconds, it's like, oh, my God. So we pause whatever we're watching. Everyone got it. <laughs> even the dog left. Oh. Yeah, just climbed into her crate. Like, you did Ew. that. But haven't you done that to yourself? 
Oh. I have farted myself out of bed, like, you know, it's 7.15. 100%. Dude, I could get up. I don't feel like getting up. And then you fart, and I'm like, I am going to get out of bed because I don't I don't want to be a part of this. <laughs> this is... I'm going to say, you've laid some rank ones down in here we haven't left. Well, because we can't just shut down the show. can't. Right. <laughs> I mean, we could. We've we heard the bitterness in Ted's voice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can. Let They've him gotten better in. over the years because you don't, you don't drink the giant... Uh, Starbucks every day. Not every day. Not every there day. was some periods for it. Was, it was tough. Tomorrow is Thursday, though. That's guaranteed. Yeah. <laughs> That's, That's guaranteed. Day. I always start uh, uh, Big Dummy. Yeah, one the of those thrill, big I'm with you. Especially after a strong, you know, NFL Sunday, oh, yeah. beers, <laughs> key, all kinds of food. Like, it's definitely some Monday mornings where you, I fart. And it's like, oh, we got to get up now. I've had the bad farts. It's the middle of the night. You know, my wife's asleep, and I'm like, I'm going to quietly lift the cover and slide my ass out to the side. Because <laughs> if I do this under the blanket that we're both under, she's going to wake up mm-hmm. and she's going to divorce me. Yeah, that's like, right. It is yeah. that bad. Your body knows. To do the... I, I used to have the uh, the window next to my bed. Now it, now it's in front. Now it's at the foot of the bed, so I can't do that. Then it up or backfire and just kind of blow it back in. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, oh, my bad. Sorry, baby. <laughs> <laughs> ah! <laughs> The only time I, I will say this one frustrated me, right? Because I try to be respectful, right? Sure. So like, I, I'll get up, I'll go to the bathroom, even just to fart sometimes. I had one girl where I break it up. She goes, "Dan, you farted on me while you were sleeping." <laughs> I was sleeping. Right. What, what you do you want me to do? I can't do it. That's yeah. what you're mad about. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, your dog sucks. <laughs> I don't mean that. I miss him. Oh, no. That sucks, dude. wonder how he is. Oh, no. Is he alive? He is alive. All right, good. Good, good. Yeah. (laughs) 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 I just, I couldn't get over that. She's like, yeah, and you farted on me in your sleep. Like, (laughs) okay. It's unconscious. Right, like, like, look, we could just break up. We don't have to be this petty. And also, what did you want me to do? Exactly. Sorry, you should have told her, that. I wasn't asleep, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> How did I you not take that up? I, I, I oh, I, I was awake, that. mofo. <laughs> 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 Woo, you just stink in general. Yeah. Oh, there's new research into a handful of herbal supplements and how they could lead to liver damage. Oh, good. Oh, I've heard that. Yep. They're not FDA right, uh, approved. Most of them. Oh, correct. So they're not, yeah, I mean, you don't know what you're getting from where. It could be a number of things. Yes, sure. it might contain some of that, but yeah, I mean, take at your own risk on that stuff. Right. It's, yeah, it is how it is. It is how it is. Uh, it is National Happiness Happens Day. I don't know if you guys have noticed my cheerful and just overall bubbly demeanor today. You've been there all day, bro. I have. I man. know. It's amazing. Just ear to ear over here. Ear to ear. You're so proud of the morning and all the regular not dumb people you dealt with. That's right. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? If you're not like me and you're having some problems, I do have some help for you. The Men's Room Top 10. The Men's Room Top 10. 10 simple things you can do today that will make you happier. Backed by science. You know what makes me happy? Whiskey. Being alone. My dog. And cigarettes. You know what I quit five weeks ago? Cigarettes. And gee whiz boy, howdy, I look forward to every day without a delicious nicotine break. So much more. All my friends say there's something different about you. We just can't place it. But whatever it is, just keep doing it. It's called uncontainable rage. (laughs) So these are uh, simple things that you can do today. Yeah, but it looks good on you. (laughs) (laughs) He does still go downstairs and just get some fresh air, but he also looks sad down there. It's not a bad call. It's nice to just stretch your legs. Absolutely. Uh, but you know how he is. I got here at 9 o'clock this morning, right? Because I had a meeting and all this kind of thing. So I'm here a little earlier than normal. And he comes strolling outside. Now, I'm puffing away. He's not. But he's just like, I came down here. Because if I didn't get out of that studio, I was going to put a dagger through the heart oh, of yeah. someone. Yeah, I'm he's like, going through it. Yeah, I was going to be like, bro, I don't want to be this guy. Just take a puff. Right, have a cigarette, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> and then cue the Disney music. You know what I mean? It's- Wow, I never thought of it that way. Uh huh. Simple things that you can do today that'll make Honestly, you happy. Just take a drag. 
<laughs> I thought I died already. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Everybody in the kingdom's worried. <laughs> <laughs> Try him unfiltered. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard of mushroom therapy? <laughs> I prefer the camel crushes. I'd like to the little pop there. Right. Turn them into menthols. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. We can't say the word because he can't possibly advocate smoking. No. <laughs> Simple things that you can do today that'll make you happier. These are all going to shock you, by the way. They're going to blow your mind. <clears throat> Practice gratitude to increase both happiness and life satisfaction. Practice gratitude. How about just have gratitude? Gra- you got to practice it. You you don't have it. There's a lot of ways to practice gratitude. From Thank keeping, you. Keeping a journal of things that you're grateful for. Sharing three good things that happen each day with a friend or your partner. I farted in the elevator and saw an ugly woman get on later. Going out of your way to show gratitude when others help you. You ever met that person that makes a little bit too big of a deal over nothing? Yeah. You hold the door they open. They work in this building. You hold the door open, then they stop and turn around like, thank you. There, uh, there's a person we know. We know that, that person. Just everything is, it's so exaggerated. <laughs> I believe he's a serial killer. Mm-hmm. I do. Seriously, man. If they said, hey, man, do you know this guy ended up killing eight people? I'd be like, and not at once. You know, over a period of three years, eight, two of them. I'd be like, yeah, man, I see that. Slowly. Hey, slowly. Right. I sometimes screw up like a giant dude the other day held the door open for me. I guess I was just intimidated in my subconscious or whatever. And I was like, oh, hey, thanks. But that's like I was like yeah. shocked. Like I didn't think a big giant dude like you would actually. I didn't think a pleasant. big black man would hold the door for me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, big black oh, man. You nice. all right? What team do you play for? <laughs> <laughs> oh Seriously, man! Though, came out of my mouth. I'm like, why did I say it like that? Wow. Oh, hey. He's probably telling his friend out betting his little squeaky white boy. <laughs> <laughs> I never said he was black. <laughs> Jesus, you give me trouble. <laughs> I like how we just assume it's a black <laughs> He had the look of somebody that might ride on two wheels. <laughs> 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 Whew. A brother on a motorcycle. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I feel you. <laughs> 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 oh, they're not allowed to ride motorcycles. <laughs> Damn, Ted. Oh, come on. We're not using this for the promo. <laughs> no, we're not. No, we're not. We keep those out. Okay. Oh, meditate. <laughs> these are uh, these are things that you can do today that'll make you happier by science. Meditate. Yeah. Well, in the gratitude thing, it's harder. Like it's. Everybody, well, most people should say please and thank you. <laughs> yeah, everybody in this room is very good at it. But it's hard to, it's sometimes you got to practice too, like just simple things you sh- I should be thankful for it. And it did. I think that's a big right. thing. Like, what are you actually thinking? It's, it's easy to bitch. <laughs> it is, man. Yeah. It is just so easy to bitch. <laughs> it really is. Whew, they say plan a trip, even if you don't need to take it. You do then. You if, look, if planning takes time. By the time the three months gets here, six months gets here, you'll be ready for it. Right. You have something to look forward to the entire That's time. That's the best feeling. Well, man. and, you and know, I feel like that study comes out every year. Is you know when when you get into the blues of the new year, you know after all the holidays are done and, and you're past the allure and the prestige of the yeah. new year, put something on the calendar. Yeah, I mean, look, every Seriously. kid, every kid in school knows, you know, when it's April, May, like they're almost going to cross that finish line. And they're going to have the summer off. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing b- being an adult. Oh, no, you're, yeah. You're going to get a week off or a few days off, whatever the deal is. But, yeah. you know, you're going to do something and you're going to enjoy yourself and all the work that you do. You're going to give yourself, uh, you're going to pay yourself back a little it's bit. It's like me going to Delaware. <clears throat> yeah. Just it, like that. Exactly. I um, would also say I, I made some mistakes in my 20s. Like, you got to take real vacations, too. I spent yes. a lot of money and time going to other people's weddings, which I like those people, but... But I wish I had any that money. I wish I taken more time to take an actual vacation. Yeah, absolutely. Vacation. Vacation. <laughs> vacation. <laughs> vacation. <laughs> French vacation. 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 Maybe you'll think about going to France. Wait, wait. Hey, dude, you coming down here in Louisiana? <laughs> oh, vacation. <laughs> oh, vacation. It's like a Southern Baptist minister. <laughs> now I'll be back next Sunday. In the meantime, I'm going to take a vacation. Oh, you show up on his motorcycle. Go tag. <laughs> <laughs> they say practice smiling. Damn. 
<laughs> I mean, really? <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> like, yeah. Not in the mirror. Is <laughs> Does this work? <laughs> what am I, the Joker? <laughs> Practice smiling. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I'm really bad at this. <laughs> I swear I'm happy. It's a Ray Liotta problem. <laughs> right? I swear to God, I'm smiling. It just looks like I'm growling. I don't miss cigarettes. <laughs> He quit and died. <laughs> Jason. <laughs> oh. Oh. Simple things that you can do today that'll make you happier. This is backed by science. <laughs> Get outside somewhere green. Well, sure. That's like my goal every weekend, man. Is masturbate on this list? <laughs> Should be. Hey, man, will you hang some more trees up in this beer garden? Yeah. <laughs> it's supposed to be outside. It's supposed to be green, too. I'm, I'm depressed AF, man. We need trees. Spend some time with friends and family. Sorry, for some, that does not make them happy. I'd say friends. <laughs> it depends on the family. Yeah. It depends on the moment or which family members, you know. Uh, this is backed by science. Move closer to work or work from home. I don't think oh, you yeah. need to move closer to work. Uh, I mean, yeah, there's a convenience of getting sucks. there. Yes. But the flip side is sometimes it's nice to have a little distance. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, mean, that's a tough one, too, right? Because I know we I, we know a bunch of people that live really far, to me, away from Seattle. But also, they have houses they can afford and land. Exactly. Right. And also, it depends if you're on call. Yeah. But if yeah. you have one of those, I'm on call, move 100 miles away to be worth the commute. Yeah. They will call everyone else first. Uh, sleep more comes in at number two. Absolutely. Which, if... If I could sleep, I would. <laughs> and then the number one thing that you, you have can nightmares, do. nightmares, Mike? <laughs> Just a few. The number one thing that you can do today that'll make you happier. Back by science. No surprise. What do you guys think? The number one thing that you can do to make have yourself sex. happier. Masturbate. Laugh. Go for a walk. Exercise. Your oh, ass. Yeah. That's a form of exercise. Work yeah. your ass out. Yeah. A man in Massachusetts is offering a reward for the return of his wallet, but you'll be shocked at who stole it, Miles. Who stole his wallet? I'll tell you all about it at 550. Thank you, sir. Headlines are coming up at 515. In the meantime, it's going to contest on the line for profile this at 206-803-ROCK. All right, I'm going to manage to drink in time. There are any number of reasons you might consider selling your home. That's where an agent who is a realtor comes in to navigate the process to sell your home in a way that's right for you. Because that's who we are. Realtors are members of the National Association of Realtors. From the mind of a two-foot-tall talking spokes puppet comes this year's biggest challenge. It's time for Bob's Dare to Compare, the hottest game show on TV that asks what happens when you compare Bob's to the competition. You get style. You get quality. You get beeps and boops and dings and whomps. And thousands of dollars in savings. Everyone's a winner when you dare to compare with Bob's Discount Furniture. Shop in store or at mybobs.com to play now. This is NSSF, the Firearm Industry Trade Association. It's Gun Storage Check Week and National Suicide Prevention Month. Securely storing firearms can help prevent suicide. Use lockboxes, safes, and locks to deter unwanted access. Learn more at GunStorageCheck.org and enter to win a gun safe. That's GunStorageCheck.org. If you or someone you know is struggling, call 988, the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. What kind of programs does this school have? How are the test scores? How many kids to a classroom? Homes.com knows these are all things you ask when you're home shopping as a parent. That's why each listing on Homes.com includes extensive reports on local schools, including photos, parent reviews, test scores, student-teacher ratio, school rankings, and more. The information is from multiple trusted sources and curated by Homes.com's dedicated in-house research team. It's all so you can make the right decision for your family. Homes.com. We've done your homework. It's warming up, folks, and about time to turn on your AC unit and cross your fingers. Or you can give up that moment of truth and switch to an American Standard heat pump system like I did. My place is on Comfort Autopilot thanks to American Standard. Energy efficient and reliable, my heat pump keeps things cool like the Arctic in the summer. And with energy incentives, I was able to save. Ready for the future of comfort? Learn more at AmericanStandardAir.com slash electrification. 
From the mind of a two-foot-tall talking spokes puppet comes this year's biggest challenge. It's time for Bob's Dare to Compare. The hottest game show on TV that asks, what happens when you compare Bob's to the competition? You get style. You get quality. You get beeps and boops and dings and whomps. And thousands of dollars in savings. Everyone's a winner when you dare to compare with Bob's Discount Furniture. Shop in store or at mybobs.com to play now. What's up? It's your boy, the Ted Smith from the men's room. And did you know I have a podcast? Well, I do. The podcast. New episodes uploaded every Wednesday on the Odyssey app. Somebody out there deserves to be recognized. And the men's room knows just who it is. So to you, we say, bottoms up, sailor. You're the toast of our shot of the day. Drink time it is, and as usual, we head to see Drink Task and Steve and Throw Hill to find out who we're toasting. Yes, indeed, and today we toast the Minnesota Zoo in Apple Valley, Minnesota. Now, to understand, three years ago, a Eurasian eagle owl, it died after flying away from the zoo. It flew off uh, during a training session. It was found days later dead on the side of the road. After that, there was a big investigation launched, and in response, authorities, they instructed the zoo to, quote, develop and maintain flight training that ensures that animals are handled in a way that prevents physical trauma and harm. Well, fast forward to earlier this week, another Eurasian eagle owl flew away from a handler during the training session for a bird show. Now, it failed to come back initially, but it flew around for a little while, and it ended up landing back at the zoo, which was good news. It just landed in a different animal's enclosure. That animal happened to be the tiger, and the eagle was promptly eaten by the tiger. Oh, wow. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. They were all excited because they're like, okay, he's not flying away like the other one. Okay, he's landing right there. They said, basically, as soon as this bird landed, gone, man. So... They're not doing so great at the Minnesota Zoo there when it comes to their Eurasian eagle owls. By the way, this might be the first time in our history, 19 years, where an owl has been the center of the shot of the day and twice in one week. Yeah, that is a fact. We got all owl news all the time, dog. Yeah, so I want to go to the Minnesota Zoo, and I seriously just want to watch their, their owl training because you know something bad's going to happen. I just, yeah, I like if I'm that tiger, it's like, ooh, chicken wing night. Oh, dude, that tiger was like, they said as soon as that thing touched down, yeah. That tiger got his ass. So we pour this booze and we drink this booze because we think it's yummy. Yummy! yummy. So over the tongue and down the throat to party in our tummies. Down the hola, bitch hola. The men's room presents Profile This. Hey, Steve, throw a hook. Could you please tell everyone how Profile This is played? I sure can, Miles. It's a simple game where we share with you a real-life news story. Something that happened right here on planet Earth. Earth, 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 Earth. And as you listen to the story, based on the stereotypes you believe to be true of people and the decision that people make, we'll ask you what it is you think makes the story a story. Hello, Ray. Welcome to the men's room. Hello. Hola. Hola. Thank you, Ray, for having your radio turned down. Yes. All right, Ray, you understand how this year game is played? Yes, sir. All right. You got your choice of one of three stories. Today, we have the wonderful world of drugs. We have animalized this, where you guess the animal responsible for causing the problem. And finally, hit me with your best shot, where you guess the unconventional weapon that someone chose to use as a weapon. Let's go with the animal line. <laughs> All right, a baby animal has been rescued after it got stuck in a wooden garden chair in Surrey, England. The female was freed by the RSPCA after officers from the charity were called to a residential garden. Animal Rescue Officer Chloe Wilson said that the distressed critter had both front feet caught between the slats of the chair. She said, quote, when I arrived, the young female had cuts on her legs where she'd been pulling and tugging, trying to free herself. She said that another animal was hiding nearby, adding, I suspect they've been playing under furniture when somehow... She managed to get herself trapped. I put on some thick gloves, approached the animal slowly, thankfully was slowly able to lift her and free her paws. Now, the cub was taken to the Wildlife Aid Foundation for treatment and rehabilitation. Now, the question is, what was the animal that got stuck in the slats of the wooden chair? Was it a deer? Was it a squirrel? Was it a fox or was it a woodchuck? So deer, squirrel, fox, or woodchuck, 
What got its dumb ass stuck in a garden chair? Hmm. Well, you said paws. Yep. I kind of gave it a little bit away, maybe. Yeah, as you didn't say hooves. <laughs> That's right. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with a sly little fox. Fox for Ray. Based on the fact they're playing in pairs, from what I see in my front yard, I'm going to go squirrel. That leaves you, Ted. Yeah. I just, I don't know. Squirrels are so tiny. I can't imagine his leg getting caught. England is famous for the foxes. There's a lot of teams with foxes over there. I watched a fox bite a dude. Tell you what, though. It's a wooden chair. Wooden chair. Woodchuck. Couldn't help himself. Wood Woodchuck. Chuck. Okay. Like, let me check out this craftsmanship. What, uh, what little guy got stuck there in the slats on a chair? Was it a deer, a squirrel, a fox, or a woodchuck? We'll find out next. That was a tease. It's one thing falling in love with a house, and quite another navigating the world of negotiating, mortgage lenders, and finding the budget that works best for you. Guidance from an agent who's a realtor can make all the difference, because that's who we are. Realtors are members of the National Association of Realtors. This is NSSF, the Firearm Industry Trade Association. It's Gun Storage Check Week and National Suicide Prevention Month. Securely storing firearms can help prevent suicide. Use lockboxes, safes, and locks to deter unwanted access. Learn more at GunStorageCheck.org and enter to win a gun safe. That's GunStorageCheck.org. If you or someone you know is struggling, call 988, the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. With an American Standard heat pump system, the future of heating and cooling your home is already here. Bringing constant comfort to your home, American Standard heat pumps are energy efficient, reliable, and ready for tomorrow, today. Plus, making the upgrade from your traditional furnace or AC unit is easier than ever before with home energy offers, rebates, and tax credits. Learn more at americanstandardair.com slash electrification. American Standard, built to a higher standard. 99.9 KISW. We return to the men's room with Miles and Thrill. Categories analyze this on profile. Let's get a little baby Adam over in the UK there. Little baby. Rescued after getting stuck in the slats on a chair in a garden. You said the the owner of the home uh, used gloves, which I think was a clue, but maybe not. Either way, uh, what got stuck in that chair? Was it a deer, a squirrel, a fox, or a woodchuck? And, Ray, that is the very question that we posed to you. Let us start with D-Ted Smith. Oh, ah. woodchuck. I think the woodchuck would have eaten his way out of there leg. Like, you my bitch, Wood. <laughs> well, he uses his teeth, but if he's stuck. That's a good point. And actually, it's a Wood Charles. This was in England. Oh, I know. It's yeah, me, Wood Charles. And, uh, wood Charles, him. Uh, Miles, you went with a squirrel? I did. It was not a squirrel? Yeah, Miles. And, Ray, you went with a fox. And you are correct, sir. Yeah, uh, I mean, that's the most English animal. I didn't realize foxes yep. were that big of a deal in England. Yeah. yeah, like, who is it, Leicester City? I think they're, are they it's the foxes? So many beagles and fox hunts and all that stuff with a big old horn. You know, when you say that part out loud, it's like, how did I not think about yes, that? Right. Exactly. Fox and the Hound actually uh, takes place in uh, Liverpool. Hello, would you like some spaghetti? Now, for all TV news all the time, it is time for TV Time with Ted. And now. Because your pathetic life is confined to countless hours in front of a talking box. The Men's Room presents TV Time with Ted. What is everybody talking about at the Olympics? Uh, dude's junk hitting the, uh, the pole vault thing. Yeah, that took up a lot of days. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. I did not know something. And finally, you know, ironically, we talked about that French men's hog <laughs> on a brand new episode of the podcast that's out. <laughs> also, BT, that's our boat now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we got a theory on the podcast. All right. Uh, Snoop Dogg. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Now, Snoop Dogg, good for him. I will say, obviously, we understand some of the stuff in the business a little more. Soup Dog is going to be a uh, judge on The Voice. Yes. So, obviously, he's working for NBC. That's part of the reason. Also, how much money do you think he's uh, making over there? Oh, jeez. Uh, Two million. No idea. Uh, $500,000 a day. A Ooh. day? Ooh. He'll make 15, including bonuses. He'll pocket about $15 million while he's in What Paris. is the bonus? Don't drop an F-bomb. Don't get caught smoking. Like, what is the bonus for reporting on the Olympics? He said, quote, I'm doing the things that I do politically stay correct and just be Snoop Dogg. That's what I know how to do the best. Well, let's hope that Damn. the taxes in uh, France are friendly. Yeah. 
Because that's well, what's getting well, paid no, there. Be, yeah, it'd be American money. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure about that. When American League teams or National League teams go and play in Toronto, and do they have to pay oh, Canadian taxes? Absolutely, they do. Yeah, really. So when NFL teams go over and play in Europe. They have to pay taxes on wherever they play. If they play in Germany, if they play in Mexico Damn. City, if they have to play in England, uh, they are taxed that way. Same with performers. If, uh, you know, whoever. Taylor Swift is in Australia, she's paying those taxes. Well, Taylor I'll- Swift I get, but, like, when I go on vacation, I still get my paycheck. It doesn't mean I owe the English any money as I was in London. But you're getting paid to work in their country. If we maybe if we did the show, like even it's yes. only broadcast in Seattle, but we're doing it from London, then yeah, England's going to tax us, even though they can't hear the show. Well, either way, Miles, I don't give yeah, a no, damn. He's, he's making five hundred thousand dollars a day to be himself. Yes, but he's also <laughs> giving up weed. Jesus. He's also giving up weed for three weeks. I no, he's not. <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> no, James. You would know. I'd be like, yeah, I'm Snoop Dogg. Yeah. What? Yeah, but he really did kick the weed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. He'd be like, no. I hate these horses. He's probably hot boxing with Martha right now. He's eating edibles. Everybody knows that. If you're I, somewhere you can't smoke weed. That would be my weed. like, cool, I won't smoke anything. Yeah, exactly. I, but also, like, look, it's France. You can get in trouble for weed there. Like I said, I know one of the, I think little baby got arrested or whatever. But, like, as long as you're not, like, just chiefing. Also, he's Snoop Dogg. Right. I can't imagine he goes anywhere in the world where there's not somebody like, yo, I brought weed for you. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. But then you got to wonder, you know, are they, are they seeking him out? It's like in Texas, they kept busting Willie Nelson for weed. I'm like, you know, he has weed. I mean, you just went on a store bus just to pop him. You did not know he was smoking, you know. But with Snoop, and not that I think the French are that worried about Snoop, but still, like, yeah, if you keep your eye on him, sure, you're gonna bust him smoking weed. I mean, I think Willie. Part of the reason they left Nashville, and Nashville's still kind of weird with yeah. weed. But, like, that's part of the reason they went to Austin. Yeah. Because they were a little more lax and this and that. And then also, I know the la- last few years, last time Willie got busted was because they were going over a uh, uh, Mexico uh, border crossing. Little different. And had weed. Border, right. Yeah. Had weed and uh, mushrooms on them. But I'm sh- You know what? Hey, look. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Snoop. But just, like, he smokes a lot. Like, I, <laughs> I want to say, I want to say it was Kid Rock years ago. I think. And I don't know if we were on the air or whatever, but I remember asking him about smoking weed. And he was talking about how basically like Snoop just smokes and smokes and smokes and smokes like in the studio. And then finally, at the end of the day, we'll be like, all right, let's lay down the track. Right. And then uh, I don't. And everyone else is worthless. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. So wait, I don't, what, man? I don't read Esquire that much. But years ago, I read a pretty good article. One of the writers he had an opportunity to smoke with Willie Nelson. Okay. And he described that. And he's like, you know, like, it's super strong, but it's like this great, you know, feeling, this and that. Like, it was awesome time. And then he described getting on Snoop's bus and smoking with, like, Snoop. And he was like, I don't know. It was like crack. I woke up <laughs> on the floor. <laughs> yeah. And, like, look, a lot of people could smoke weed. But I'll tell you what. You ever been stuck in one of those sessions you know, or just, I don't even sometimes just at a party and like people keep lighting up stuff and passing yeah. it around. Like before you know it, just like, what did we do? Mm-hmm. Yeah, a couple of years ago, my neighbor came over right before Christmas and he's like, hey man, you want to smoke a joint? I'm like, yeah, absolutely. So smoked about half the joint and I'm like, I am lost, right? I just, I can't just like, yeah, it's my homegrown stuff, man. But as I've gotten to know him, there's never a moment. It's almost like Snoop. He never doesn't have a joint in his hand. Yeah. He constantly, so, he, so he's just always high, but I'm smoking his stuff. I'm like, wow, man. And he's just like, yeah, man, it's just what I smoke. But I will say this, one of the best neighbors you could have. Chill, cool. I, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I had a buddy once years ago. He was going to a Washington Commanders game around Christmas. He slips on the ice uh, outside the stadium and, and breaks his leg, but Jesus. it went through the skin. Oh, ah. that's right. Right? So an awful, awful thing. Yeah. So when I was back at the D.C. area around Christmas, I went over there. We basically, you had to take turns kind of going to visit him, A, to see him, but B, to, like, help him. Like, he could not get up. Yeah. You had to change a bedpan. Not a big deal. But then the next morning, right, like, he's just smoking weed. And I was like, yeah, I'll, but same thing. We just went round, round, and round. I, I had to have a lunch with a lot of people in my family. My niece and nephew were younger. I barely spoke. <laughs> you know, she's like, I'm just going to shut up and try to be cool about this. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, good for Snoop. And and look, he's doing a great job, right? A lot of people are talking about the uh, Olympics just because Snoop's there. So yeah, I mean, I mean that's wh- why he's there. That's the whole point of sending him, right? Correct, correct. 
Uh, I did, have been watching some of the uh, Olympic stuff. There was a great comeback earlier today in track and field. And it's funny. If there's one exercise that sucks the most in my mind, it's running. Like, if you're not chasing down a ball or another person. Right, just doing it to do it. Like, just running to run sucks. But, man, I like watching track and field. And, like, mm-hmm. some of those at they're, they're just unreal. They so don't want to turn it on, too. Correct. They, they just know the pace, and then they know, okay, this is my chance. Like, if you watch the 400 tonight, if they show that again, you'll see that. That's what I was watching. Or the guy just goes, okay, my turn. <laughs> and just, phew. Right, you've been in fifth place this entire race. They tell you it's 100 back. yards, and all of a sudden, yeah, that hey, stuff But you got him by a head. You, you timed yeah. that out to know to get him just at the end. I mean, just to stick it to him. Uh, the USA synchronized swimmers uh, did a Michael Jackson routine that included upside-down moonwalking. Okay, mm. all right. Must have been adult swim. If you get it. hey oh. <laughs> mm. Yep. If you get it. <laughs> If you get a chance, uh, just go online and Google. It's from. It's got to be thirty or forty uh, years old. But Google SNL male synchronized swimming. <laughs> it's pretty. It's pretty good. One guy can't even swim. Uh, what was he gonna say? <laughs> Do you remember the skit? I, man, I have a vague recollection Thank of you, it. Yeah. Does. Yeah. It's yeah. like Martin Short. It is Martin Short, right? And, he can't uh, actually swim. They're okay. wearing. Floaties and everything. They have no idea. What the guy doing. from Spinal Tap. Okay. Yeah. Chris for No. Uh, no. I also, uh, this Sheer- morning. Harry Sherman? I think it was like 4 or 5 a.m. I was watching him throw that javelin. That is crazy, man. Wild. How far they take off off the uh, off just off their feet now? And I, before they were, it just seemed like javelin was this thing where you plant it and you threw and you kind of yeah. just let your lead foot stay on the ground. These guys are launching their bodies into the air and then throwing from a, a much different technique than was you know because right, the, they can the run up, way. They can run up to it. I think they got to like let go, but they can go over. Right. Whereas right. if you're throwing a shot put. Or the hammer throw. Or you, discus. you got to stay you in gotta, Or a discus, right. Oh, you yeah. have to stay in that little box. Right. Mm-hmm. And you can't, uh, you can't go over that. Track and field, by the way, like usually I think base, like basketball, even the shortest guy is not that short. Right. Right. Football, everybody's pretty big. There's some different sizes. Baseball has a lot of different. they're muscly. Right. Track and field, I forget about the field part. You're like, Jesus, man, there is a wide range of sizes of these oh, athletes. Yeah. Well, so you look at like the guy that throws shot put versus the guy that runs the 100-meter the dash, and you say, they're, they're on the same team. Mm-hmm. You've got to be kidding me. One guy has no neck, the other guy's all legs. Oh, uh, I, hey. man, I came into the training room uh, at one point in time during summer workouts, and ran, a guy named Randy Barnes, who was a shot putter for the USA, he was in there lifting and getting his workout in because he was in town for What the was he putting up? He just didn't have a neck. <laughs> right. I mean, I, honest to God, like, I don't think he could put a football helmet on if he could play that sport. He was just so thick and so I mean, trunk of a human being. Yeah, I was going to say, at DeMatha, when I was there, I don't remember a kid ever coming in just to do field events. But basically, the track coach, because we had a good track, we've always had a good track team. But the track coach would basically just show up to football practice and be like, ah, give me that one. Oh, right. Yeah. I mean, one guy. Now, granted, he was a stud. He ends up playing D-line at Virginia Tech. I don't know if he's stuck in the in the league. But, like, he would set records, and he had never thrown a shot put till he got there. But they right. were just like, you're a giant strong dude. You could figure this out. And the discipline doesn't carry over. You get, who's got the strongest arm in the NFL? I, I don't know. but don't know. Josh they, Allen? Can they throw yep. a javelin? No. Probably not. Probably in not. fact, a guy can throw a 100-mile-an-hour fastball. Can he throw a javelin? Probably not. Ah, uh, you're right. But I would like to see. I'd like to see a football quarterback try to chuck that thing. I mean, yeah, just to see the difference. And then the javelin guy can he throw, throw a baseball? Football. Can he throw a football? Just based on it's a different technique because the arm is completely extended before the release, so yeah. it's not a cock back throw. But yeah, well, in some uh, back in the day in the eighties, there was a, uh, a real quick period where some of the javelins were actually bendy. Mm. Thank you. That's a Revenge of the Nerds yeah, joke. Yeah. All right. Who do you think has been the toughest guest on Hot Ones, where Hot they eat ones. the spicy food with oh, the chicken wings? Oh, that, well, they mentioned this. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a female. It's a... Uh, oh, God. What's toughest it? in what regard there, Ted? That could take the most heat. Oh, Mike. gotcha. So they... Didn't they, react. They are Took the it like one. a boss. Uh, oh, man. Who was I don't know. that? Was it an actress? It is an actress. Fairly attractive. Oh, she's super attractive. Uh, I would also say crazy. Can't keep a husband. Olivia Wilde. Oh, not J-Lo. That's what I was going to say. Holly Berry. Oh, Holly oh, Berry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> J-Lo. 
I don't, she's over there. Quick on that one. Uh, sorry, Holly. Uh, he's uh, <laughs> Sean Evans, who hosts the show, said she stands out. She handled it better than me. She told me, I'm here to eat dinner, Sean. That's what she said. Uh, <laughs> he also said that uh, at least once a season, so there's guests that will surprise him. <laughs> Uh, he says he's done the show or been doing the show for 10 years. He estimates he's eaten over 3,000 chicken wings and says, <laughs> basically, he's not eating them when it goes out. Yeah, I would think not. Yeah. Right. He's like, look, I've eaten plenty of them. But he also said that basically when he goes to restaurants, like sometimes the wings will just show up because the chef will recognize just them. just assume and like, that's what he wants. Correct. And yeah. I mean, look, that happens all the time. You're not going to say no to a free chicken wing. Well, no, I would not turn them down. No. Well, I mean, look, I think that's part of, uh, you know, when you think about gluttony and athletes and awesomeness, I think about Babe Ruth. <laughs> but that was like one of the things with Babe Ruth. He was arguably the most famous person in the world at his time in New York City. And it's like, the guy, I mean, that guy goes anywhere. It's like, look, we got to get you drinks. Yep. Mm -hmm. We got to get you this. We got to get you that. So it's like, of course he did all that. Uh, also, with the chicken wings, when he's saying he goes to restaurants and people buy him stuff, I don't know if you guys know this, but in Japan... Competitive eating is massive. So yes. when I watch that documentary on Kobayashi, don't forget, Labor Day, it happens. Just like Kobayashi! Netflix! Uh, Netflix. The final countdown. Uh, like every restaurant he'd go into, even though he wasn't trying to eat a food challenge, right. like if the chef saw him, because their culture's different, it's like a personal Game affront. On. Right, oh. and the chef would just be like, eat this, right. try it. <laughs> and he would sit there and shovel it all down his gullet and eat it all, too. I mean, good problem to have if you're broke, but he's not broke. So I just, can I just go to a restaurant? Can I just sit down with my date and just order what I want? Like, no. Nope. And what is a normal portion of food for them? Is it the same as us when they're not competitive eating? Probably. I mean, does he order a pizza and eat the whole thing, or does he have two or three slices? I bet you he just eats two or three slices. I mean, for the most part, you like, know, there's you always, feel there's like Booker Badlands, I forget his last oh, yeah. name. Like, he's a large man. But a lot of them, truthfully, are pretty fit dudes, yeah, men and women, yeah, absolutely. who just practice for that thing. And but they've can... also learned to expand their stomach, and typically that's when you know you're full. So if you don't have that real mechanism because you've trained your body to be able to eat a large quantity of food, how do you know when you're full? And what now, would you, you rather have, people buying you drinks or buying you chicken wings? Drinks. Yeah. yeah. I, my initial instinct says chicken wings, but then I feel like if you've just eaten and somebody sends over wings, you can't really fit it in there. But if well, I've had a ton of drinks a and someone, you buy me another yeah. drink, I will still drink If it. someone sends you a shot, you're going to do the shot. If someone sent me one chicken wing and a shot glass, <laughs> I need it. And a shot glass. Well, well you're right. I'll do it. Thanks, man. I don't, need, just a whole, I don't need a whole, you know, I don't need eight of them, but I'll take one. Can we normalize that? Can we turn that into a thing where we do just send people wings and a shot glass? <laughs> one wing. Yeah. There you go. One wing. One wing, one, one shot wing glass. One wing for everybody, one shot. Let's Thanks, do this. <laughs> take the shot and eat. Kind of like licking the salt. And, you know. Yeah. Send me over one shrimp, please. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. They call that a shrimp shooter. There you it's go. already in existence. Yeah. Oysters. Oyster shrimp. shooters. Yeah, all that stuff. That's already there on the menu. I'm going to eat some oyster shooters this weekend. And you can get uh, some vodka in there or tequila, if you so choose, which makes it a little bit more fun. Uh, I always forget to mention this, but I'm still watching. There was a brand new episode last night of Deadliest Catch. They're still doing the same stuff. Right. It's still yes. exciting. But there's some newer captains in there. So I like Jake got to take advantage of one of the younger captains now. Oh, that sounds wrong. Very cool. Thank you, Ted. <laughs> we appreciate it. You're listening to The Men's Room. This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Whether you love true crime or comedy, celebrity interviews or news, you call the shots on what's in your podcast queue. And guess what? Now you can call them on your auto insurance, too, with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. It works just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance, and they'll show you coverage options that fit your budget. Get your quote today at Progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Hi, I'm Angie Hicks, co-founder of Angie. When you use Angie for your home projects, you know all your jobs will be done well. Roof repair? Done well. Kitchen sink install? Done well. Deck upgrades? Done well. Electrical upgrade? done well. Angie's been connecting homeowners with skilled pros for nearly 30 years, so we know the difference between done and done well. Hire high-quality certified pros at Angie.com. 
From the mind of a two-foot-tall talking Spunks puppet comes this year's biggest challenge. It's time for Bob's Dare to Compare, the hottest game show on TV that asks, what happens when you compare Bob's to the competition? You get style. You get quality. You get beeps and boops and dings and whomps. And thousands of dollars in savings. Everyone's a winner when you dare to compare with Bob's Discount Furniture. Shop in store or at mybobs.com to play now. The men's room returns with Miles and Thrill. Now, let's see what's happening in the real world. All right, here we go. A seagull steals a man's wallet in Nantucket before running so far away. When a naked lady successfully carjacks you, it is definitely not your day. Morgan woman learns that uh, siphoning gas and smoking don't mix. A rider learns one of canine's dogs' brand new tricks. And a Kansas toddler is rescued after falling down a 10-foot drain pipe. It is time for your headlines. Now, it's time to hit the head. Lines. Here's my cock. Early Miles is going to hit him with a flock of seagulls joke and not yeah. a bare naked league joke. Oh, man, Mike has a good point. <laughs> oh, well, <yeah. laughs> back to back there. Our top story, we're going to Massachusetts, where a local man was robbed. While coming out of a grocery store one day, he tells the media that he wasn't wearing a tire with any pockets. So his phone and his wallet were there in the uh, in the tray on the shopping cart that he was pushing out to his car. The phone and wallet stayed on the tray as he unloaded the cart into the car, coming back around for another load to find a seagull perched on the cart which then grabbed his wallet and flew off with Damn. it. Damn. Unfortunately, he was not able to recover the wallet himself, so he put out the word that whoever found it could keep the cash inside, plus accept a $100 reward for returning it. At least he's practical with what he's going to give back. Oh, he also might have, like, eight bucks in it. Sure. A lot of people don't carry a lot of cash, right? But he kind of gives you the go-ahead, like, yeah, take Just the cash take inside. Don't care. You know? We know. Right. Right, I know it's the easiest thing to grab. I need my cards back. I yeah, need my that's ID all the back. Other stuff. I need my 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 badge to get into work back. Like I I just need the wallet. In other news, over in Iowa, a man was arrested after a bad night. Police were called about a naked man that was running back and forth on the streets of Des Moines. A video that's uh, going around on social media shows the man running aimlessly before targeting a parked car. He slips in past the driver, who begins to punch the naked man as he attempts to steal his car. He did eventually make off of the vehicle, but not without dragging the driver a short distance. Police did eventually capture the nude man after he was uh, after he crashed the stolen car. He was taken to jail, and no serious injuries were reported. Why are you naked? The problem with the story yep. is it also does not say what he was on. I feel like you don't ever just run around naked without being on something. I think if I were a cop, mm-hmm. I'd be more angry if you weren't on something. Like, yeah. sir, what do you want? Yeah. Like, oh, dude, no, I'm completely sober, officer. I just got naked right. and committed this crime. Right. Tase. Then, no, you put the taser back in and you just grab the gun. Like, screw it, dude. <laughs> I'm shooting You're your ass. You're sane and running around <laughs> naked? No. <laughs> Let's go down to Oregon for what's likely the dumbest story I've read this year. Police were called to the scene of a U-Haul business parking lot on reports of a fire. What they found was one of the trucks had caught fire, burning badly enough to spread the flames to a second truck before burning out the drive line, sending the van rolling into a nearby tree. On the uh, on the scene, officers found a heavily burned gas can and an insulated electrical cord from uh, from where the van rolled and decided to check the surveillance footage. What they found was a bakery van that had rolled by the parking lot, which is when the driver began to siphon the fuel out of one of the vans. Jesus. Great work. In your company car. <laughs> right. It had it was like mama's baked goods yeah, or mama's pretty easy to spot sweet that treats one. or something like that. Had the phone number on the yeah, side. Yeah, just dumb right where you are. But you know, Miles, stealing gas is stressful work, and our driver was in need of the sweet, sweet nicotine of a cigarette <clears throat> while she filled her van. She absolutely lit up while she was while she was siphoning, starting the fire. That that's wow. why. Yeah, she lit a cigarette while she was sip, siphoning fire, uh, 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 fuel. She was eventually tracked down and now faces several charges. She's the woman with no eyebrows. That's right. <laughs> right. No kidding, dude. Like, there's safety measures at gas stations now to kind of help your stupidity there. Yeah. You're siphoning. Your mouth is full of gasoline, or at least the vapors the from fumes. when you're siphoning. Right. What are you thinking? What are you doing? But somehow she survived. Right. That's she's totally amazing. fine. Yeah. You're right. They didn't even mention that she had, like, burns or anything like that. Nothing. Not even that the eyebrows were gone. Like, come on, nothing? Damn, give her a little bit of something, karma. <laughs> Help me out here. Nothing. Nothing at all. Fine. She got away with it. But just in case those stories left a bad fuel vapor taste in your mouth. <laughs> Thankfully, there's good news. We go to Kansas, where a critical situation turned into a story of heroism. 
Authorities got a call in the middle of the day from a scared family that had lost hold of their one-year-old child, which, side note, (laughs) right, your one-year-old just disappears. Yeah. Like, when you're, I'm not a parent, but I I remember my niece and my nephew, once they gain wheels, dude, they disappear freaking quick. Dude, right. I will always say this, you know, as a parent, you want to see your kids achieve all these milestones. Absolutely. And here's the truth. So excited when they can learn to walk. And then we would lose track of them, or they take off running at the store or the Philadelphia right. airport. And right. then they learn to talk, and they don't shut up. That's right. <laughs> like, they just keep talking. Great job. You made it past this milestone. Yeah, now. at this point, regress. Like, I wish you didn't learn to see you like 10. Right. <laughs> Damn. While wandering around the property, the kid had managed to squeeze himself into a 12-inch wide PVC pipe, just a foot Damn. wide, that had been buried vertically in the ground, falling at an astounding 10 feet below the surface. Given the age of the child, any hopes of him grabbing something that was lowered into the pipe were futile. He was like 13 months, something like that, so he's, he's not going to be able to pay attention to any of that. But a quick-thinking officer on the scene constructed a makeshift varmint catch pole, securing the <laughs> child from under his shoulders, that's what they called it, mm-hmm. and hauling him back up and out of the pipe. Basically, it's just a big pole with a like a like a, a rope around it to just kind right, of try to slide get, rope in there. get underneath the arms and pull his ass out of exactly. Where, did where did this happen? Kansas. Okay, that's why it's a varmint. Right. Exactly. Yeah, places like I'm like it's a varmint. That's a, that's a varmint. Right if you are done a domestic animal, you are a varmint. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Men's room sports. Fortunately, the Mariners were not able to make the first game of the series against Detroit, but they're back in action for round two tonight. That game over on route at 640 tonight with George Kirby taking the mound. For those of you that are going to uh, into T-Mobile Park, wait, I've got some good news for you. All oh, right. nice. You've also got uh, more Little League World Series semifinals tonight over on ESPN and the Olympic coverage over on NBC and USA. As far as your results go, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. USA Women's Team Pursuit. As well as Sarah and Hilda Brandt from Women's Freestyle Wrestling took home the gold for the USA. All right. Bringing the total to 27 gold and 94 medals okay. overall. All right. Well done, gang. As far as your weather, the heat is on the way back. Things are going to cool to about 62 tonight with some light winds blowing some passing clouds through. And that makes way for a bright and sunny day with a high of 87 degrees tomorrow, which is perfect temperature. For some delicious men's room IPA from Black Raven Brewing Company. Like I said, if you're going to the game tonight, it is all over the place around Team Mobile Park. So awesome. Simply got to look for that beautiful bright yellow can. It's also been known to be on tap in Snohomish at Jersey's Great Food and Spirits in Seattle. Oh, nice. At Jackson's Golf Course. All right. As well as uh, Jose's Famous Salsa in Squim, if you'd like to go and check it out there. And you can find a comprehensive list of locations on the men's room page of KISW.com. And with that, Mike Hawk is out. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. We'll see you next time for the Head Chef and Ted's Meat and Potatoes. And of course, we'll play the game known as Big Dummy. Yes, indeed. It's all true. But in the meantime, well, we be all about this bitch. So until next time, please do what you do best. And for Aletha's sake, stay the men's room has been taped before a live studio audience wardrobe and makeup provided by fantastic limited this has been a presentation of the men's room radio network oh man a double flush production you don't just live in your home you live in your neighborhood as well So when you're shopping for a home, you want to know as much about the area around it as possible. Luckily, Homes.com has got you covered. Each listing features a comprehensive neighborhood guide from local experts. Everything you'd ever want to know about a neighborhood, including the number of homes for sale, transportation, local amenities, cultural attractions, unique qualities, and even things like median lot size and a noise score. Homes.com. We've done your homework. With an American Standard heat pump system, the future of heating and cooling your home is already here. Bringing constant comfort to your home, American Standard heat pumps are energy efficient, reliable, and ready for tomorrow, today. Plus, making the upgrade from your traditional furnace or AC unit is easier than ever before with home energy offers, rebates, and tax credits. Learn more at AmericanStandardAir.com slash electrification. American Standard. Built to a higher standard. From the mind of a two-foot-tall talking spunks puppet comes this year's biggest challenge. It's time for Bob's Dare to Compare. The hottest game show on TV that asks, what happens when you compare Bob's to the competition? You get style. You get quality. You get beeps and boops and dings and whomps. 
thousands of dollars in savings. Everyone's a winner when you dare to compare with Bob's Discount Furniture. Shop in store or at mybobs.com to play now.